got next. We ready to flex. We are ready to rock. Headed to the top. We got next. Can't settle for less. I'ma need your best. So give it all you got. We got next. We ready to flex. We are ready to rock. Headed to the top. We got next. Can't settle for less. I'ma need your best. So give it all you got. We got next. Number one. Numero uno. Front page in the news. Yeah, now you know. For the win. Welcome to the stage from Russia. Team Empire and Evil Geniuses! It's Team Empire! It's Evil Geniuses, it's the Grand Final! Kazeka, congratulations on making it to the Pro League Grand Final with Team Empire. We know you want to lift this. You've been in winning situations and so close to lifting trophies before. Why will this be yours today? Yes. I'll just say you made the best win. But that's you? Maybe, who knows? Canadian, welcome back to a finals. It's been some time. This, a Pro League title, could be yours. Unbelievably, EG have never lifted a Pro League trophy. That, in your hands, how will it happen? Uh, we just gotta play our game, focus on ourselves. Uh, at the end of the day, as we said before, we hate to fucking lose and we're here to win. It's Team Empire and Evil Geniuses for the Pro League Season 9 Grand Final! Thank you very much, Matt, for the intro. And there you go, Evil Geniuses versus Team Empire. The war heats up, gentlemen. Here we are, Empire at the cusp of their very first victory. Or EG, the first time bleeding blue all over the trophy. This is going to be an epic showdown. It's just great to see the current unstoppable force in Empire and then old school EG back at the finals. Yeah, and better than we've ever seen them for a very, very long time as well. I think that's the story for both of these teams. And look, while they may be very mild on the desk, I'm sure that when they actually step up and we start seeing some of these clutch rounds, like we saw from Young, we'll be able to hear Canadian from over here on the desk. I, I really hope we get to hear a woo from here. And that's the thing. I don't think we're going to hear Canadian wooing until that trophy's lifted. And honestly, there's not a moment that deserves it more. And that's what he's working for. That's what the entire team is working for for this empire. They have a lot to really prove here for everyone. They've said, okay, well, we basically want to be the best team in the world, but G2 are not here. So they need to really make it their way. I mean, G2 isn't here. Still big fight, good money, right? <laughs> well, we did have the price pool increase, so that's pretty huge. Again, you see Team Empire with Joystick, Dan, Karjeka, Shepard, and Scyther. Every single one of these players has had a fantastic week. And Dan has surprised everybody with his plays as a newcomer on the team. Joystick has been absolutely wonderful when it comes to frags and for Karjeka. And then you look at Shepard, who actually looks a lot like Rasputin himself. So Russia's greatest frag machine. We'll see what happens with this game. Gentlemen, what does Empire have really in store for us? Well, I don't think any team has looked this good so short after a roster change. I, again, it's easier for them to do a roster change than anyone else because everything is so pre-planned. Stepping in there, you already know that you don't have to do a million different things. There's not a lot of roles you have to fill, but looking at EG, yeah, they have had their changes in terms of pure play and positioning. It's Necrox, NVK, Canadian, Geo, and Young. The team fell short not too long ago at the Paris Major. The victory, it was a pretty swift defeat at the hands of G2. They got taken away at the quarterfinals. It's been a repeating thing. We used to talk about back in the day, Sisu and Enz and now Mouse Sports being always eliminated at the quarterfinals, the Pro League finals. At some point, this has turned into EG, and now here, they're in the grand final. Is this going to be a repeat of Sao Paulo two years ago, or is this is the underdog story? I, I don't know if we can call anyone here an underdog, to be fair. Like, well said. EG has had some 
pretty bad games, but they've also had some of the best we've ever seen in Siege. Yeah. And you can't stay the best forever. I mean, G2 might want to disagree on that, but at some point, you know, people lose. It happens. And I think these two will be the G2 killers eventually. You know, EG's been having their crack at it for some time. Empire a bit newer on the block, but both of these teams, we're looking at the runners-up of the most two recent Invitationals. And EG as well, the runner-up from Six Major Paris. These guys are no strangers to the big stage, but neither of them have lifted it recently on a stage of this caliber. Yeah, this is going to be a pretty tough game for both teams. There's a lot to prove. There's a lot on the line. Of course, with the price pool increase, there's even more cash on the line. The new trophy. It's the first time we've had an EU an EU based Pro League Finals ever since Gamescom 2017. It's been so long and there's so much on the line. And NA, ever since then, actually, with Elevate in the final, if you remember with Laxing the Skies, that was the last time they really were able to, to hit it in terms of Pro League itself. Otherwise, yeah, Major, yeah, Invitational. But those are still outside of the bigger bubble of the normal Pro League circuit. I think we're lucky with this matchup as well, because if, if we think a little bit about some of the maps that these two teams like to play, they kind of line up. Yeah. So one of the teams is going to, or even both of them, is going to end up banning maps that they actually enjoy playing. Huh. Clubhouse might be in the li sight lines for one of these two teams because they're both extremely strong on Clubhouse. Yeah, I think when it comes down to the map phase, a lot of these teams, you know, both of these teams have demonstrated uh, that it doesn't always just come down to a specific map that tells the whole story. <laughs> you know? <laughs> What Sorry, is this, a, a bionicle? Of, yeah, a bit of a... I'm, I, I'm, is that the Russian machine? Uh, <laughs> is this the secret Where, to the Empire's success? Where's Panari? He's gonna. He's usually the one that tells us all about this. But not to cut you off, but we have our map video, so now we can actually dig deeper into your terms, James. Yeah, I mean, there you go. We, we were talking about Evil Geniuses before, you know, an incredibly uh, great performance against FaZe. You know, a, a couple of close ones, but, you know, most recently, Border may have gone the distance, but by the end of it, I've got to say, Evil Genius has looked in their element, and oh, as we see some of the first bans and picks come out, it looks like we'll be revisiting some familiar territory. Uh, Bank, map one, a Villa Consulate removed, doesn't surprise us, and Oregon for map number two. All right. Empire actually worked very well on bank. That jackal play that they have with joystick is something to fear and add to that Capitao. It's a very strong combination for Empire to use, and we're left with the last two maps. And we're gonna go for Clubhouse. Oh boy, the Ciders Clubhouse between EG and Empire. Honestly, you could not have planned this any better. No, I mean, bank makes full sense. Oregon, a little bit scary if we think back on some of the things that have happened to EG on Oregon. Yeah. But they're not playing against a team that jumps out every single window everywhere. Um, last we saw Empire play, play in Oregon, it was mainly Joystick just holding out up in, in the top floor in the south side of the building, right? So hopefully Ichi has a way to clean out the map a little bit quicker than we've seen any other opponent do so far. Yeah, Oregon is strong turf for both of these teams, but at the same time, like you said, we have seen weaknesses. There was a Penta versus Empire match uh, in the Pro League this season. Penta played an incredibly strong counter to Empire's upstairs roam game with, you know, catching them on the uh, on the, the flank that they were attempting rather than trying to contest the roamers themselves, and that worked perfectly. On the Evil Geniuses side, we've also seen some mixed Oregon experiences, but I've got to say, we couldn't have picked a set of maps that I I think would give us a better show. Yeah, that's that's for sure. And you know, I talked about Clubhouse in the beginning, but I honestly have not checked the the map vetoes just yet. But with that said, gentlemen, any closing thoughts? Who do you think is going to take map one? We'll take it one bite at a time. I think uh, I think Empire is going to win. Map one. Bang. All of it. All of it. Oh boy, there Look, we go. Empire have been on an upward trajectory more steep than anything we've ever seen in Rainbow Six Siege, and I think that's fair to say. And Evil genius as well, it's been a very long road. But you know what they say, they hate losing. I'm bleeding blue for this one. Ah, uh, there you go. Sticking to your roots. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think that wraps it up for a pregame. We're all eager to get into the match, so let's get it all started. Evil Geniuses versus Team Empires, USA versus Russia. And here we are, Entero, Kickstar. Have fun. Thank you so much, Milos. We finally gotten to the point now where here in Italy, we have two teams eager to prove their worth. Evil Geniuses are the only team from North America that has walked away with a Pro League season championship. Empire looking to try and take the crown away from G2 
and they're Europe's last hope here in the tournament. Yeah, Empire have looked so consistently strong on their rise as the European Titan. And, you know, finishing first out of the region surprised a lot of people. But, uh, well, we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it. We've got Bank ready and loading. Show you what's going to happen in this best of three for the finals. Of course, it will be a pretty interesting one no matter how you shake it. I expect this to go all the way to the third map as we just... As we just saw, it will be Clubhouse when we, I'm sure, get to it. An opportunity for Evil Geniuses to uh, avenge the fact that Fnatic didn't win a single round. And of course, EG and Fnatic have quite the history. There was an opportunity there for Evil Geniuses and Fnatic to actually engage in a rematch that I think a lot of people would have liked to have seen. And, yeah. You know, these teams would have been fighting at equal strength or even strength, rather. I got to figure that with the way that Evil Genius has played against FaZe, they're going to be coming in mighty hot. I originally had predicted that Evil Geniuses would be winning against FaZe Clan. But after the way that FaZe played yesterday, and after the way that EG played yesterday, I had some doubts. And I mean, I think if you really look at the way that EG has played over the last year or so, having doubts is perfectly okay. Yeah. They always seem to be on the precipice of greatness, and then they just fall short. Sometimes they fall in farther short than other times. Empire is probably going to be the greatest challenge that they've had since they faced G2 at the Invitational in 2018. And now this is an opportunity for EG, who have progressively improved with a semi-newer roster with Geo now finally seemingly able to carry this team through a number of different maps in a position to maybe douse the fire that is Empire. Yeah, Geo has certainly been living up and beyond even expectation. A lot of people, I think, we're questioning him on that roster. He's such a big name and such a titan in North America, but he just hadn't had the performance that people expected of that big name. And here at this event, he's just been killing it, absolutely killing it. We've had some amazing standout performances on AG apart from Geo, though. I mean, Young pops into mind. A rock on that team, one of those players that usually flies way <laughs> under the radar, but not so in the last match, in that one versus four that was absolutely incredible. You just don't see that every day. You gotta commend him for it. And uh, he's always been the consistent player, but he Young hasn't really been that person who stands apart from the pack. He certainly did today. No questions if I had been casting that or you. I probably would have cursed. We would have lost our minds. Yes. Yeah, and I, and I figure I don't particularly want to receive a stern talking to from either Ubisoft nor ESL. So, so lucky very, us. Very thankful. Yeah. And I mean, we also got to witness it in all of its glory that Young just seems to be so consistent and so clutch. He rarely has a bad game, and he has more moments in the spotlight as of late than I feel he doesn't. He's able to carry a match on rules that don't necessarily lend themselves to carry positions. He's a rock on defense, and of course, when you've got him essentially working as your quarterback, either as a smoke or possibly a Mira, whatever you have him in, he's always able to do damage. But man, oh man, how much does that clutch imbue <laughs> evil geniuses with confidence, motivation? Yeah. And, and an absolutely inspiring moment, too. Perfect moment indeed. And going into the finals, they're going to have to show that it's still there. It's going to be Evil Geniuses to ban first as they start on defense, and they're going to get rid of Capital. Not surprising in the least. Whereas on the side of Empire, they will eliminate Glass. It's an operator that they've banned before in this tournament, one that they seem to just not want to deal with. That's totally fair on the side of Empire, and it's the same story with Mira. An operator that has been banned consistently by Empire throughout this tournament. And she's gone. Just an operator they don't want to deal with. It doesn't have anything to do with seemingly with any individual team or their play style as much as it has to do with just Empire not wanting to, well, confront a, a mirror window. I mean, if you know that Empire is coming from the same avenue every single time on every single site, mm. then Amira gives you a huge advantage over that, right? It does sort of counter Empire's unpredictability and aggressive playstyle, despite the fact that they are really predictable in where they come from. Put your hands together, please, as you can hear everybody else, whether you're sitting in your bedrooms, on your couches, uh, wherever you may be, as we now have our grand finals ready to begin. All right, so it looks like it's going to be a CEO office defense to start things off. And quite interestingly, a sixth pick into a clash from a smoke from Young. Young is a pretty good smoke player. 
You know, he's up there, T1, as Smoke players go, sitting with the likes of Bosco in North America. But pushing him onto a Clash is going to be an interesting change. This might play into what we were just talking about, or what you were just talking about. Lack of a mirror. Well, what do you need? You need something that can confront your opponent head on. Clash can give you that. We'll see how Young wields that Clash shield moving forward. Lots of information on the side of the defense as well. You've got a Valkyrie and a Maestro being brought. And of course, Clash does count as an information operator. Vigil on Canadian, so he's expected to roam pretty heavily. And Necrox on the dock. Dock has been very popular on sites like CEO, where it's often the case where you are going to take a long range bullet to the chest and need to be healed up. It's going to be very useful, I'm sure, on this round. This will be fascinating to watch. You saw that there were some deficiencies in Team Empire's overall play on bank yesterday against Dark Zero. Mm -hmm. Of course, the uh, fellow countrymen of Evil Geniuses. DZ does play a very different style than EG on a lot of occasions. DZ often ends up being less predictable than EG, sometimes less structure and, well, DZ is a bit notorious for being very good at counter stratting. They do an awful lot of work. And the one thing that needs to be addressed is that the deeper you go into a tournament, the less time you have to prepare. EG has had maybe a couple hours to prepare for either Fnatic or Empire. They knew it was Empire, but they had to get through phase first. Crowd trying to imbue the teams with energy. Rightfully so. It's all or nothing at this point. Evil Geniuses have yet to give away a pick as of one minute into this round. Good job for them staying nice and safe. I believe that was an evil eye just dispatched there by Karzeka. Good use of that lifeline, if that is the case. NVK aggressively on the main lobby stairs. He is, though, spotted by his opponent and could potentially be a free kill if his opponent plays it correctly. That's the Sophia by ATMs. Necrox will get the first kill of the series, though. There goes Joystick. Great pick to have early on. Karzek is going to take out Canadian, who is trying to push up on ATMs. Seems there's a bit of a standoff here between Karzeka and NVK, and Canadian was trying to help that. You've also got Geo down below lurking inside of Tellers. He's worked his way all the way out, and he's going to head over towards open area. Dan instinctively firing at the body in front of him, but it's a clash, so the bullets will just ricochet off of the shield. That angle played by, between the bars there by NVK. How do you contest that, really? It's a tricky shot to land. Those are bulletproof bars, of course, so it's going to be not the easiest fight in the world. You can see that square wall has been opened up, so Team Empire have an avenue, and it looks like they're going to call Karzeka off of his push at ATMs just to focus on pushing site. I mean, if you think about it, those concussive blasts from Zofia could go quite a long way to maybe throw NVK's aim off, but you're probably going to need them on the Clash. So how do you find yourself in a position engaging that? You don't. As Karzeka very wisely learned, and maybe it was somebody else on Empire making that call, you pull him away. And now you've got two different bodies from Empire trying to figure out how to deal with this Clash, as you're just going to see a very slow retreat from the Clash moving on out. Young will continue to occupy the space he's in. Oh, a beautiful shot from NVK. Necrox falls to Dan as Empire will get another body, but still that shield will be ever persistent, ever present. A threat that will loom over Empire as they look to push on in. They've only got 10 seconds to go. Geo finds Dan, and well, Empire are in trouble. Karzek is the only one who's not immobile. Shepard getting the plant down. Young on Sheath of the SMG, and we'll find the kill. But Karzeka with two seconds left is on Repel. Do you give in? No, you don't. You might as well just wait it out. Take some time, think it over, and Evil Geniuses will open up this matchup with round number one. Beautifully played there from Evil Geniuses. Very aggressive to keep Empire at arm's length. One thing to note is how they managed to deny Karzeka entrance into that main lobby. Karzeka stuck at ATMs for the majority of the round, then he finally rotated to North Windows. But here's the thing, because he didn't clear out the main lobby, he could not be fully safe on the repel, and he had to repel in positions that were obviously less ideal to him. Did manage to get this pick, though, on Canadian, which was very important. Overall, the strategy from Evil Geniuses, I love it. I especially love the way that NVK play, played in the main lobby. I would call it dangerous. Definitely very risky, what we saw from NVK. But it worked. Good for him. Normally, though, I would imagine that is something that we would have critiqued. Free pick on the top of main lobby stairs. It very <laughs> nearly was, though. It very, very nearly was. It's going to be a basement defense here from Evil Geniuses up next. And uh, Team Empire is going to have to adjust to this new bomb site. 
It's also possible that Empire just got caught off guard by CEO being the very first site. And True. when we say caught off guard, we don't mean, uh-oh, we don't have anything to deal with this. How do we handle so, it? But more so, we probably could have picked a better lineup had we known that that was where they were going to end up defending. Absolutely right. I mean, at the same time, if you look at the lineup that's being brought from Empire, it's basically the same thing. So they're likely going to try to apply this cast of characters that they have as operators to every single site because you don't know. There's still tellers on that middle floor opened up. With Mira being banned, it means that an open area is going to be trickier, though it's still definitely doable. And we've seen teams work it. It really just depends on the way that they play around it. So with Empire starting things off here in round number two, they know that they're going to have to go to the basement. And how they align themselves is going to be very interesting. Empire does tend to take the same angle on in every single time. That means that their primary focus will probably be on Skylight Stairwell first and foremost. What's the main attack onto the basement these days. You gotta clear out the roamers, of course. You need to drone things out. Got Jackal to support. Joystick so good at detecting those footprints, finding his opponents, and, well, just collapsing on them. Canadian in archives with the pulse. He's waiting for an enemy to stand still, but he is being Jackal tracked. That's gonna make his life very difficult. And the C4 will miss, the Prefire will come in, Dan will take down Canadian, and Empire have the lead early on. It was a nice setup there from Evil Geniuses. I love to see Canadian on Pulse. It is one of the operators that really he made a name on. Joystick's going to take down Geo, and it's getting even worse for Evil Geniuses. Following that Pulse pick, Jackal being in play here is huge for Empire. Trying to hold this map control for EG. It doesn't really work all that well. Within, you know, 90 seconds, you've taken two of the most important operators on that roam out. Both the UMPs from Evil Geniuses will fall. And I mean, losing a Pulse when you know how strong Pulse can be playing inside of gold in the latter half of a round is critical. Now, not just Pulse, a Canadian Pulse. Canadian really does know how to play that operator, and it's unfortunate to see him get taken out early. Okay, so the Castle Barricade was placed there likely to allow an Archives roam to thrive, but also potentially just to, you know, delay the opponent. Uh, and look at that, they're gonna use an Ixkeros on it. So clearly a redundant Ixkeros, uh, otherwise I don't think Empire would have used that. That's a misstep there. Dan's gonna be a little bit worse for wear because of his teammate going for a pre-fire on a common angle. But luckily for Empire, Young gets picked off and it's a two versus five, so it might not matter. And Young was caught over towards the back of the other site by lockers. So very interesting that that was on the main stairs where the kill from Scyther came on out. This gives Empire perfect opportunity to just walk right into CCTV from the server opening and have control of the site. It's going to put a lot of pressure on NBK and Necrox playing deep within to try and stop this. There's going to be lots of plant utility as you wait and see if Shepard will be forced off. For the time being, it looks like he's going to have no issues whatsoever as there's a rotate from NBK caught out. This is going to be very difficult for Necrox to bail his team out in a 1v5 with the Fuser planted from Empire, who have looked frightening in this round. Dan discarding over top of the Diffuser as Necrox is essentially trapped inside a red, and it will be a mercy killing from Empire. That's a perfect round from them, and what? Well, it's a good way to answer back that CEO defense from EG in round one. Beautiful start there on that round for Empire getting those two picks. They follow it up with just two more, and then it's all up to Necrox, alone in sight, scared, I'm sure, against five Empire players. Doesn't get worse than that. Again, the Jackal, such an important influence in that round. It managed to allow for Dan to get the kill in archives that you just saw. Joystick follows it up with his own kill, cutting off the rotation there from Geo, and then it just all went downhill for EG from there. So, great job to Empire really precise. They knew how to pick apart that basement. Now, EG tried their best to have some sort of roam presence, but they got shut down in that endeavor. And you gotta wonder, are EG going to double down on the roamers? Are they going to try to keep that ball rolling? Or are they going to just simply play Psyche? Which would be, I think, most teams' safe mode. It's just bring it back to Psyche, especially when you're dealing with Joystick on Jackal. 
A lot of flexibility there. And also bear in mind that Nomad is unbanned. Now, Bank doesn't really see a lot of Nomad play. Most teams forego her here because of how large the hallways are, how large the entries to and from the sites are. You tend to find her on the more claustrophobic sites where she can really get good value out of those air jabs. And even though it was an operator that Joystick was playing with great reliability, Jackal and IQ will work quite well in a pinch. And that's exactly the comfort pick that you're going to see from Joystick. Given the PDW with 50 bullets, it made life miserable for Fnatic when he did go on attack for those six rounds. Basically chewing through anything the Aussies had, and it was one of the better showings from Joystick as of late, who has been, I don't want to say less effective, but definitely has seen a, an uptick from the rest of his teammates. Yeah, I think it's his contributions on the side of everybody else, to be honest with you. Like, you can't really, you can't really fault Joystick for that. I think it's, uh, you know, it's good not to have a star issue. I think that's one of the things that Empire doesn't struggle with. They have every single player in a position where they're capable of contributing massive amounts of fragger power or support or whatever it is you need at any given time. And that's one of the things that makes Empire great, their flexibility. Now they're going to be clearing out just upstairs, looking for those roamers, taking down those footprints and scanning them, trying to find some opponents to get picks on early on, but not going to happen. Uh, Evil Geniuses seem to be playing all in sight this time around. They'll be playing the slow game. Ooh, there is one technical roamer, and that's MVK. He's gone. Karzeka gets the pick. Now Necrox is stranded in the server staircase. And there's not really a setup on the server staircase to help Necrox out at all. At least it doesn't look that way. He has an opportunity to keep himself safe due to the fact that he has those toxic canisters. But that's really about it. If he gets pinched here, well, unless he's able to do his best Young impression with that shotgun, he's not going to be there for that much longer. But Young's got his cross, and this might actually free Necrox to be able to get out of jail. Yeah, I imagine this is going to come down to Necrox wasting as much time as possible. <laughs> wow! He's going to place some barbed wire down late into the round. That is uh, typical Necrox. Necrox is a maniac. He is. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. He in, all, in all the best ways. Mm -hmm. Dan was looking to possibly get a flashbang entry into those server stairs as well, as you still see a body down below inside of server. And I don't know if Empire are aware of that. Necrox still playing there, but Joystick will find a kill onto Young. A great angle. And now Necrox falls too. The Empire guns are more than awake at this point. But Joystick's entry into the garage, as if somebody didn't already know, is now definitely known because of the Valkyrie camera. Canadian steps on up, but gets traded out by Scyther, who's just in sight. That's going to leave Geo in a position where this is going to be awfully difficult. He knows he's going to have to deal with one inside a garage, losing all but one HP, and it's Scyther to finish the job. Two in a row from Empire. Off to a good start on Bank. You gotta bet that they learned an awful lot from their matchup against Dark Zero and are applying it here perfect. Well, okay. So, Empire, their attacks on the basement, pretty one-sided, gotta say. They're just making it work for them well. And Evil Geniuses, their formula that they're trying to put out there, they've tried two different things now, not working out either way. A hard server hold, ooh, wow or anything along those lines is being punished too harshly by Empire. The roaming punished too harshly by Empire. And so evil geniuses, when they eventually do go back downstairs, are gonna need to try something different. But for now, they're gonna go to CEO. It's probably the right call, as uh, basement just has been working out. CEO just opened up. It's an opportunity to, you may as well take it if you're evil geniuses. Now. Overall setup here from EG is much the same. In fact, I think fully the same as the last time they went to this bomb site. Brought Young on the clash once again. Very powerful on the last time EG were, was here. The cameras from Geo, of course, going to be useful. NVK, big thing about this round that stands out to me last time we saw EG here was how NVK played at the top of main lobby stairs by Banana. That is a very aggressive position to play, and it's NVK relying on his absolutely insane aim that made him such a big, you know, household name in North America at the very beginning, and, you know, he still has to this day. And it worked out for him then, but can it work out for him consistently, or will he change position? I mean, I'm not really confident in the way that Empire were able to push the site last time on CEO, and because of this, I don't know how much of an answer they're going to have for that clash. 
correct me if I'm wrong, but it was a sixth pick from the Clash on the very first round. So you might not have had the best tools available, and you might have them at your disposal now. That's why we saw Karzeka move. If you recall, he was basically hanging out in the lobby with NVK, just shooting the breeze until he got recalled over to the windows to possibly deal with the shield that was playing inside of the supply closet, but wasn't really able to do all that much with it. And, well, who knows exactly what he's going to accomplish. Joystick, who wasn't really present in that very first round due to an early death, is now going to be positioned on the windows that Karzeka had taken up home on. And he's just going to drone on in. He'll determine that A is essentially vacant. There's nobody in there. And if Necrox isn't watching, this could possibly be a position for Joystick to just repel on in. But Necrox will spot the drone and Joystick will go back onto the window just playing around it. Nobody's really there to do all that much. One of the CEO walls will get taken out and Empire will continue their pace that they've set up over on the east side by the Skylight stairwell. Well, Empire have so much control. It's actually pretty impressive the amount that they've been able to chew away from evil geniuses without any punishment. The big takeaway for me is how well Empire have adjusted into a CEO take. And of course, that was their intention the last time they came here. But they were also distracted by their main lobby presence. That Thatcher EMP coordination with Joystick was beautiful, by the way. You got to commend the uh, teamwork. Necrox with the run out. And he actually might be able to make it back. No, it's unlikely. Dan shuts him down. Beautiful job there from Dan. And I think for Necrox, that was worth it because he shut down the north window presence. Also, the only set of smokes for Empire, which means that a take on CEO is going to be a little bit more difficult now. You see an, a wasted C4 go off. And I say wasted because there was nobody even in the area code. So Geo just shoots his shot a little bit too early on. It's going to be Scyther going on over to the windows and repelling upside down now, trying to catch somebody in his line of sight by the double windows. He's got a long vision into CEO, which is still, for the moment, completely vacant. There's nobody playing inside of A, but Young can rotate if need be. He's going to watch and see as Dan is going to press on up to Janitorial, and EMP will go off, but it's not going to be of much use. And Young's not really in a position to slow him down with the taser either. Canadian waiting just at the top of the stairs could possibly dive on Dan, but he's not there for the time being. Plant going down from Shepard, and if nobody gets this, well, it could be problematic. Canadian cuts off the head of Dan, and now down below, Geo cuts through Garseca. And while the diffuser goes down, there goes Shepard as well. It's going to be all Scyther upside down. He spots the Maestro and takes one body out in a 1v2. He's playing the Repel, and this is a possibility that Empire could hold on. It's going to be very difficult. And if they are not really wise to him, well, there he goes. But no, Geo will be able to grab him. And even though you've got Canadian inside of sight, he felled the shield, it doesn't matter. EG in a great position to hold on, and they will do just that. Tie it up, two to two, and the CEO defense right now for EG working effectively, but they're not gonna have an opportunity to do it again on their next two defenses. And that's the story, isn't it? It's been two different bomb sites, two different results. CEO, definitely somewhere where Evil Genius is very comfortable. Basement, somewhere that Empire have picked apart piece by piece. This north window run out from Evil Geniuses, great adaptation. I have to say, they committed fully to it, and that's the beautiful thing, because it was a change from Empire, where Empire shifted away from a lobby focus, because they realized it wasn't working, into a skylight take, because they figure, hey, let's go with what works, what's typical, what's common, what we know we can, you know, Russian machine doesn't break sort of strategy. And it ended up costing them because EG adapted on top of that to run out North Windows continuously. And yes, they got punished, but it was so worth it because if you don't feel pressure from North Windows on an attack like what we just saw Empire execute, you're, you're effectively not dealing with nearly as many crossfires. In fact, none, because you have the clash to support you by holding the main hallway and storage. So now EG has the crossfire and they can work the advantage on site. It's a beautiful play. I love their commitment. Um, and by their, I mean EG's commitment to holding those North Windows. Interesting time for a tactical timeout here from Evil Geniuses as well. I would imagine that you don't save it for the side switch because you're more worried about going down into a possible 4-2 split. EG's been successful on the CEO site, but they have struggled on the Locker CCTV site, which is where we are going to go for round five. And... Yeah, I would expect you to take a moment, pause, discuss it, and maybe shore up your weaknesses because it has not been working for EG. Yeah, if you're an Evil Geniuses fan, you gotta be worried at this moment in time. Like this is, this is like, okay, EG can win CEO all they want, but they can also only go it twice, right? It's, they're not gonna be able to go back to CEO 
on this uh, on this defensive half. Why? Because they're successful every time they go there. So if Ichi can't make something else work, you know, the basement, because that seems to be where they want to make their stand, then it's gonna be it's gonna be really difficult for EG when they go to the second half. Yeah. I think EG's a little bit more worried about the immediate. I'm sure if EG how confident they are in their attacks, I would imagine, well, if you're gambling your tactical timeout now, two of things have happened. One of the two things have happened. Either one, you weren't anticipating using it this early, and you are because you're in trouble. Or you use it now because you don't think you're gonna need one on that second half. It could honestly be both. They might think that they didn't need one, period. And we actually have seen teams forego using a tactical timeout to the entirety of a map. Each team gets one timeout per map. So you no real downside in using it. Yeah, and it's good timing. You know, it could build up some momentum, work out a new strategy, like you said. I guess the only real downside to using it is that your opponents also get to confer with the team. Of course, and yeah. Because of this, if, you, if you're beating your opponent senseless, why take it right. when your opponents will be given an opportunity to breathe? But for Evil Geniuses, this is a good time. I, they need to figure out basement. That's really what's going on here. And hopefully, if you're an EG fan, they have. Canadian playing much safer with the Pulse. I like seeing this. He did play safer earlier the last time they were here, but not quite need to get picked in, in server. And I mean, when EG had their roam on the very first time that we saw a defensive locker CCTV downstairs, there was no trade potential. They were all playing in silos. You know, you saw, what was it? Both Geo and Canadian in positions where nobody could refrag each other. Yeah, they were playing to defend uh, by server and ended up, uh, ended up both getting picked off. But one by one, there was no, like you said, no refrag. So you subbed out the Kaid for the Maestro, and Young will have the Italian Operator in his hands. You've got Necrox playing on the server stairs. So not really that much of a difference. Oh, oh what a peak from NVK. <laughs> not many people can make that shot. And NVK can. Wow. He'll that's... walk away with a tiny bit of HP left, but man, what a play that is. That's a great example of a fight that you really shouldn't win, and the fact that MVK did against someone like Dan, who has just been proving himself time and time again, is impressive. Scyther trying to clear the barbed wire using these flashes. He's got to know that his opponent is flashed right now, but the gas canisters keep repelling him. This is beautiful play from Necrox. Necrox has used all the canisters, though. Yeah. So with a minute left, you're trying to use oh. it. Oh, beautiful shot from Scyther through the smoke on the Necrox. That'll clear out the stairs and allow you to walk on down without too much of a worry. You've also lost some of the plant denial, and a Jackal Ping will give one of the remaining members of Evil Geniuses some worry. NBK is still very low, too. So you're going to have to hope that either your Evil Eyes, which you might still have two of if you're Evil Geniuses, or the two Nitro Cells that will likely be in the hands of Geo and Canadian will need to be your only plant denial. 30 seconds to go, and Joystick on the lobby, main lobby stairs, rather, heading on down, he'll think better of it. Joystick is one of the most important players, I think, in this situation. He's going to have to punch at the right moment. He's got two players to hold those main stairs. Geo is going to be pushing up the main stairs while the smokes go into sight. Geo will be shut down, and that's going to give Joystick an opportunity, but he gets return fragged by NVK. The C4 for Canadian lands, but the diffuser is in the hands of Shepard. Scyther's going to enter into red, but shut down by Canadian. Beautiful play, but Shepard shuts him down in turn. NVK, can you do it? Yes! He drops to deny the plant, but he doesn't need to. Time is all he needs, and evil geniuses will take the round. That was a very risky play from NVK, though. If I can rain on his parade for just a second here. He had three HP, and he drops through the hatch when the clock still had two seconds left on it. And because of this, if Shepard gets the kill, that's it. That's all she wrote. Why drop through the hatch at that point? Why not wait until you know that the timer is indisputably at zero and then drop? Because Shepard doesn't have the ability to fall off the plant. Yeah because the clock is zero and Empire loses. I have, I absolutely have to concur with you on this one. I, I think- Do you concur? You always do this. I have to agree with you on this one. NVK- It's a quote, Michael. I know, <laughs> but you always do it. NVK took a huge risk there. He didn't need to, he did not need to. If he had played out the timer, all he needs to do is wait for the tap, tap, tap on the laptop because there's there's absolutely no way that Shepard could plant in that situation. MVK had one HP in this situation. Yep. Mind you, he could have died to one of those bullets, but none of them landed. So very big risk by MVK. But hey, he won. It worked out for him. He's been making uh, taking a lot of risks rather throughout this whole match, and it has been working for MVK usually. Usually, he took a significant risk to peek the hatch and take Dan out of action, which a lot of people would say 
don't peek the hatch. Yeah, I, <laughs> it, it was a pretty, it was a pretty big risk. Yeah. I mean, that's one of those things where if he loses it, we turn around and we say, "Why did you peek that hatch?" Yeah, it it absolutely is. Again, NVK's play style has has been throughout this match so far the type of play style that you want to say normally oh, that's a mistake, but he's making it work. So tellers, finally. And it's going to be a defense uh, that made four sight, but there's going to be an expenditure of bodies up top, unsurprising. You're usually going to keep a couple bodies over near CEO. You're not going to be defending that site, but you want to keep the presence and pressure up there. Joystick on the north repel. He's going to be instrumental in clearing out the roamers, but he's got Canadian underneath him on the pulse. So as soon as somebody repels into the CEO, he could potentially detonate the C4 using his heartbeat detector. I'm sure Canadian's aware of what he's dealing with right now as he's continuing to linger underneath, waiting for an opportunity to catch a prey. Dan has moved upstairs. Yeah, it looks like second floor control, or at least most of it, is pretty good. Joystick is inside a CEO, so all of EG have dropped off. C4 wasted there from Canadian as well. He missed it. Unfortunate timing. A minute and 20 seconds, and EG has vacated that second floor. I've checked out. You're allowing Empire to continue on up there, and there's going to be soft destruction in spades as well. You look at the breaching rounds that are being, or the breaching charges that are being brought. You got both Dan and Karzeka running them, so you have six opportunities to remove some protection from your defenders. You've also got a set of smokes that Joystick will be running nonstop. Oh, that's a shot if I've ever seen one. And he's going to go for more. The absolute madman, as we said, he's a maniac. And now Karzeka will tussle with Necrox as well and almost lose his head because of it. Man, the way that Evil Geniuses are playing are just unlike we've ever seen from them before. Karzeka is going to, however, shut down Necrox, which is huge. He just kept peeking those holes that were established by Team Empire, and eventually it worked against him. But he's done a lot of damage. And the way that EG are playing, again, their aggression is just non-stop. We've got Geo coming up from behind by server. He could potentially flick anyone in Skylight. We've got a main lobby focused here for Empire, so that might not be the most influential push, but still Canadian in open area who can flank at any time. Hear the exothermic charge go off, and Empire can just walk on in now as both teams are fighting fit 4v4. Karzeka and Geo are both lower on HP. You've still got Canadian in place somewhere. This wild card, he's very far back. It looks like he's actually over by open area. And with the UMP going off, hard to tell if it's NVK or Canadian engaged in this fight. A beautiful shot from Scyther will claim Young. They have to be very cautious. Now as Geo goes across, takes out Dan. Karzeka, fall, Karzeka takes down Canadian, but then Scyther will fall too. It's going to be Karzeka left to protect Shepard, who will be very vulnerable, but there you'll have it. NVK shuts down Karzeka. Shepard will be all on his own. He's going to have to come off of the plant at some point. Geo doesn't know where he is. Oh, what a shot! It's going to be an easy round for EG in the final 20 seconds. It got scary there for a moment, but a little bit of a celebration from Geo and a smiley face put into the wall as NVK will be credited with the disable of that diffuser. A 4-2 scoreline is as good as you could hope for this tight of a competition emerging from either half. I said it before and I'll say it again. This is an evil geniuses that we've never seen before. The way that they're playing just, they don't care, it feels like. They've been going at it so aggro, and it's beautiful. See if they can keep it up. They're going on to attack now. Empire will start, looks like, on the basement. Absolutely excellent way to start the first half of this map for evil geniuses. They're going to be bringing, oh no, a six pick off of the Jackal onto a Sledge. Is this really going to be confirmed? Yes, indeed. Interesting pick from Geo, leaning towards the soft destruction. Downstairs to Cash and CCTV is about as ordinary as it's going to get for these two teams. Though we did see, and I, I mean, I do say that when we saw EG go to CEO at the very start. Pretty ordinary setup for Empire. I would suspect that with this Ella being on the board, we're gonna see a heavy contest of the server stairs. The deployable shield, as well as the shotgun, leads me to believe that that will very much be the case. Yeah, Empire are, I think, a team that you could reliably 
You, you, okay, you can expect them to contest the server stairs. And Dan bringing that uh, shotgun on Ella, yeah, that's gonna happen. He's also got the deployable shield that's gonna make defending from server stairs even easier. We've got Jaeger's ADS is being placed in there, Gushmat Mines. Scyther is even playing underneath the staircase by the sewer tunnel with his heartbeat detector to try and assist in that hold. And Joystick's going to be assisting as well. So, server focus told here for Vampire. I don't know if, if EG are actually going to fall for that same trap. Because we saw when, uh, we saw the last time that Empire played on bank, uh, a similar situation where they just held the stairs and it was a struggle for someone to deal with it. So it's, well, it's been a problem for a lot of teams on bank. Correct me if I'm wrong, but with Maverick not banned, you could have him in play here if you really wanted him. You don't necessarily need the Hibana Thermite combo. You can run a Maverick. Usually we'll see one of the hard breachers get banned out, but it's a Capitao and a Jackal that are not on the board. So it really comes down to personal preference here as to what EG wants. Looks like they're opening up all of the drop downs, which would make sense if. This might be a locker's take. It could be. I think EG are just trying to open up their options because they realize that there's somebody holding that server stairs and they don't want to contest it directly. That's my guess. They they have a lot of options. That's the beauty of it. Because they've yeah, they've opened up all of the drop downs to the bottom floor, so. EG can pounce from anywhere. Lots of soft destruction too. Canadian on the Zofia has the breaching charges available. Sledge will obviously bring in the frag grenades, but he's got that hammer at his ready. Yeah. The Sledge was six picked into from a Jackal. It looks like, based on that six pick, that they're not planning on a server take because they don't have the smokes anymore that would have been there from the Jackal. Say goodbye to Shepard, though, as there's NVK, and well, it does definitely appear like it's going to be some kind of takeover towards Lockers. Joystick gets shut down by NVK. Who's going to be able to outduel him? A lot of people have leveled criticism at the play of NVK, but so far in this finals, he has showed up every step of the way, leading his team oftentimes in terms of kills and in impacts. He has been a very valuable tool for them. Only 30 seconds to go, and you have to wait for a locker push at all. Dan is being completely negated over on those server stairs, and Karzeka will now be the one to possibly move on over. He understands that lockers will be the point of assault, but say goodbye to Dan. Young finds him, and right now, EG is just demolishing Empire on this round. 20 seconds to go, down goes Karzeka, and where's Scyther? Well, he's inside a vault. He's gonna need to come out at some point. He's got the UMP in hand, and he'll play around these bars. We'll be able to land the shots. No, Gio gets that. How about a flawless round? How about a start? It's as good as you're gonna find from EG. Wow, okay, so <laughs> I don't even know if they droned out the Ella, but Evil Geniuses said, oh, they're holding server? Ah, uh, we expected that. We're gonna go somewhere else. It's fine. And they committed to a full garage take? Okay, one thing I want to point out on an individual level, NVK. So he's been really performing above and beyond throughout this match. But that pick right there is what really stands out to me. I remember way back in the very beginning of Pro League, we're talking way early seasons, NVK was the player that just always took Garage. You could not hold a Garage on bank against NVK. That is one trait that he has always had, and it seems to still be alive, because he not only got three kills in that round, but also single-handedly took control of Garage with no drone work being done to assist him in that instance. Beautiful job to NVK. And Evil Geniuses, as a whole, again, playing outside of their minds. Just something we just, I, I feel like I haven't seen this EG in ages. There was a belief that was held by longtime fans of Evil Geniuses and, and before they were even playing under that organization. Yeah. That the longer that an event goes, the better they get. I mean, I think that that broke over the last couple months. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people lost faith. But... It does seem to be a return to form, as what we've seen is, well, they looked a bit shaky against Immortals. I think that coastline match always gives the worst kind of flashbacks to most people. Yeah. And then to go up against FaZe, I was impressed with FaZe and the way that they dismantled Lestream. I wouldn't have been too surprised to see FaZe emerge from that matchup in, you know, 
better shape and, and actually would have faced off against Empire. But EG did well. It got scary on border, but they ended up pulling out ahead, and it was another 2-0 victory, one of many that we've seen so far this tournament. We've only actually seen one 2-1 so far. And they now find themselves up 5-2, to two, willing to take their map. And if they lose Oregon, well, then we'll set ourselves up for the second best of three, that, or the third map, rather, that we've seen in this entire tournament. A good opportunity for Team Empire to cool off by taking a tactical timeout. And an animated coach as well as bench. You have to ensure that you're not getting to each other's plays. You can't get into each other's heads. Yeah. It'll affect you too much. You gotta be calm. You gotta maintain composure through these breaks. They can sometimes trip you up. So I think this is a good time for Empire as they are clearly on the back foot when it comes to bank. They need to formulate some kind of strategy, something out of the blue to counter what Evil Geniuses is putting up right now. EG's not really taking the time to talk either. No. They're, I mean, I think, you know what, honestly? Very solemn looks on their faces. EG are focused. They are focused. And hey, man, that's a good thing if you're an EG fan. I think that uh, I think EG just want to play. I think that they're ready and they just want to play. If you're a fan of baseball, it's like when a pitcher is throwing a no hitter or a perfect game. Right, and they, they just want to play. They, they want to stay talk. in that. They want to stay in that groove. Yeah, absolutely. No, oh, don't want to ruin that. I think EG definitely fall uh, fall true to that kind of mentality. So round number eight is about to go underway, and EG are one round away from match point. There was a Montane being teased. Now, it seems strange to think of EG playing on Montane if it's not Young playing on that shield role. It's Canadian who whipped it out yesterday. Of course, was bait, as you can see now, that it stays that same hue of blue, that shade of blue, but it'll be a twitch this time around for EG to see what they can accomplish. And while Locker's takes are not entirely uncommon, it is a bit odd to see it used immediately. I would suspect that we're probably not going to see it again mm. because Empire will likely be more prepared for it. That is true. Uh, one thing we should notice, yes, while Evil Genius's first attack was just really well executed, at the same time, uh, Empire did not adjust at all. No. There, there was so little adjustment there. Uh, they even, they had their Ella in server stairs, I think at the last minute of the round when they'd already lost two, three players at that point. And I mean, you basically negated an entire operator. Yeah. The reason why you put your resources there is because you know that your opponents are going to have to fight through that at some point, and EG just decided to go completely around it. And there's been an explosion in Empire's lineup. They have completely changed around an awful lot of things. I think realizing that they were starved for information is a significant problem, and because of this, Dan is now going to go with Valkyrie, so you can establish an evil eye camera inside of the garage. You can do the same thing, or the black eye camera inside a garage. You likely will have an evil eye camera in there as well from Shepard, but just in case, you can find another that's a little bit more hidden. Let's see what you can do with it. Joystick upstairs is already taking quite a bit of HP. Oh, Whoa. beautiful shot. Say goodbye to the Twitch. The F2 is off the board, but now Joystick under fire from a separate angle. It's a lot farther down. Look to be all the way maybe by parking garage through the windows as Joystick will hit the deck and crawl on his back, trying to avoid any errant bullets that are shot forward from Evil Geniuses. Necrox is hot on his trail, but Joystick is still prone. He's still being spotted. And because of this, EG are aware that, yes, we don't have map control, but two, we're taking away too much time on the clock. This is half the round already. The problem is, is that if you have Necrox lose this fight, you're in a major disadvantage due to that being one of your heart creatures. And this is Joystick we're talking about. He's lost half of his HP here to errant shots from various different guns. But he keeps getting marked, he keeps getting droned, and he's still alive. He's doing a great job of positioning himself adeptly, but he will likely be shut down here by Necrox. There you go, NVK and Necrox finally get him, but how long did it take? He also took down Canadian, so I would say that that was very worthwhile. Yes. I would say that's a victory for Joystick, and you can move on from there, knowing that you did a pretty valiant job when you consider the parameters of that row. You took out Canadian. There's no Twitch drones that you have to worry about. You've taken out the best gun on Evil Geniuses as well. Yeah, it's 100% it's an advantage there for Joystick. Great roam. And uh, now Evil Geniuses are going to be pressed for time when they go for the side take. You've also put Necrox in a position where even a small bit of a C4 explosion will kill him. Yeah. And he's also far more susceptible to falling to a toxic canister. Now, for EG, they've got Young holding on to that diffuser. So he's going to be the one that's going to be taking the brunt of the aggression from 
Empire when he inevitably goes for the plant. It's going to be a grenade that gets thrown out in the EMP as well, just to try and disable anything that you're going to see from Empire. If an EMP does catch you right, it could make it so that Scyther's blind. Dan takes out Necrox, but there you have it. Every single gun will become active, waiting for Karzeka to possibly come on out from inside of his safe hole. It's going to be two members of Empire, but there's only two seconds. Where are they? There's no plant. Young is going to have to go down, and this is a loss for EG. No opportunity. He's going to fall off. He's not going to allow them to have that glory or satisfaction of killing the Thermite as all of his teammates died around him. Well, I would say uh, nice try from Evil Geniuses, but honestly, you know, it really comes down from the fact uh, to the fact that they lost Canadian so early on upstairs. Canadian was the dedicated roam clear of the top floor. He lost his fight despite having lots of information on his side, plenty of people joining for him, and then it took a whole minute, a whole minute to rotate two players, Necrox and MVK, to pinch Joystick. That's that right there. That's the crippling blow. So that is Joystick playing excellently. And a mistake by Canadian. Also, that was a beautiful shot. He also, Joystick was also very aware of Necrox's position, though. And you could see he yeah. had the preemptive fire on him, and it, that could have gone very bad for Necrox. Absolutely could have. He did eat some damage, I believe, in that engagement. But, yeah, I, great job to Joystick, though. Again, individual effort there. I think that saved that round. Um, but a mistake made by Evil Geniuses in that they only applied one player to the top floor clear. Sometimes you can just take a top floor clear on, on uh, basement defense of this map for granted. Sometimes. Not in this case. Yeah. So we'll see what happens on CEO now as this lineup from Empire looks very commonplace. Nothing really out of the ordinary. On CEO, you're going to be engaging at long range most of the time. Even when you're going to have your attackers go through those CEO panels, you want to have at least one ACOG, possibly two. You're a bit limited because Echo is banned, so you'll go with likely Maestro, and then, I mean, Kaid does have access to an ACOG, but you're not going to play him in the same capacity that you would see a possible Echo. You might see a Rook or a Doc. In this case, you're going to bring a Doc. He finds himself in a position where he is picked far and above ahead of Rook, and a large part of that is because, number one, he works better with the team with those three Stim Pistols, and number two, it, juicing yourself up that extra 40 HP, it could mean the difference in a fight. So, the Empire. Sitting nice and comfortable on the top floor. Have not gone here yet. The Nomad, not a surprise to see on the side of Geo. We've seen a lot of bans for Nomad today, especially on the side of Team Empire. Team Empire like to allow themselves the aggression that Nomad completely shuts down. And Evil Geniuses, well, they're going to bring that tool since it's available. As if they know they're going to be dealing with the CEO hold. No engagements thus far. Lots of time being spent here by Evil Geniuses. They're just setting up. I, I like this about EG. Running the Nomad, if these air jabs are used on the windows, then it's going to make a difference when they go to Vault on out, depending on when that air jab gets triggered. I don't think it triggers Vault, like in midair. Does it do that? I thought you had to be like standing. That's actually a very good question. Yeah, I've never, I've never experimented. Vault out a window. I, I haven't either. No. Well. I suppose we'll find out. Someone will correct us. Someone will correct us. Inevitably. Thank you. And, and thank no, you very much. Genuinely thank you. In, we in don't know. advance, thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. We say thank you. <laughs> Evil Geniuses setting up for a square take. And they've got everything going for them, really. Uh, there's not a lot to say about what Empire's been doing except for that. Joystick from below takes down Young. Not enough flank watch on the basement. And Evil Geniuses will repeat a trick that we saw from Empire in the last half. Taking out that evil eye cam with the Thatcher EMP. Scyther, though, another kill. And evil genius is looking in a tr like they're in a tricky spot. Some missed shots there from Necrox. It's unfortunate. Air jabs being deployed as well by Geo, but just looking to possibly cut down any flanks that would happen inside of that skylight stairwell. At least you were able to get one of those panels open if, if you're EG onto the CEO wall. But EG's last round, and this round too, both find themselves being victims of the clock more than anything. And a great deal of uncertainty right now is you still have Necrox out on Repel. It's going to put more of a focus on both Geo and NVK to push on in. And Empire are primed and ready to greet them. There's tons of plant denial. There's great guns. And Scyther's going to get Geo quite easily. Smoke will choke out a possible push from NVK on the back. And right now, Empire are just banging on all cylinders. Let's say no more. There's two kills from EG. Dan is there to take out NVK. And where are you, Necrox? Ten seconds to go in the worst position that you can find yourself here on bank. It's a death trap. You're going to have to swing on in. It's a joint effort from Empire. After this tactical timeout, Empire have seemingly found the magic formula that they needed 
to mount a comeback. Clear minds do tend to prevail, and in the last two rounds, they absolutely have. Yeah, really beautiful job there to Empire the last two rounds, like you said. And CEO, very comfortable, it seems, for Team Empire. A little bit of trepidation on the side of Evil Geniuses. We were seeing earlier a lot of aggression from EG, just taking that fight, being confident in themselves. That seems to have somewhat slowed down as they shifted over to attack. It's a beautiful shot from Scyther there as well that we got to see. Evil Geniuses are putting a lot of effort into their setup, and then when they go for the execution, unfortunately, it's working against them. And here's why. Because Empire are the team for the setup game. We're talking about, like, setting up a take into a site or setting yourself up to repel a take into a site. That's that's what Empire does well. What has just happened, by the way, with, uh, with Scyther oh, Joystick? Oh, boy, that is not good. Looks like it was an impact... I, I mean, think it, it must have been. It, yeah, Scyther has used both of his impacts, so I'm guessing Joystick walked in front of Scyther, because there's only one impact hole. So yeah, Joystick walked in front of Scyther, and then they had to use both impacts to open up one hole, and then both players took a lot of damage. That's my guess, but we didn't see it. But, but yeah, I think, that's, I think that's what happened. I mean, there's a replay system. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> if, if they caught it. <laughs> I don't know. T time stamp that one. <laughs> it's when somebody in the chat screams, a uh, clip it. Exactly. Exactly. Please, I'd like to see. Yeah. Now, it is a teller's defense here, which means they're going to have a heavy CEO presence from Team Empire. This, uh, I'm not going to lie, losing 100 HP, and more, sorry, early on is really bad. There's no resets anymore for those that are unfamiliar with what a reset is. It's when you knock down your teammate and then pick them back up, or your teammate is downed by something else and you pick them back up. They yep. got 20 HP now instead of 50. So that's this is just hope that is lost from Empire because of those, you know, that, that unfortunate set of circumstances that befell both Scyther and Joystick. And it's really going to make a big difference in a gunfight, too. It's possibly two bullets less that need to hit, or two bullets fewer. Mm-hmm. So, the last time and the only time that we've seen Tellers be defended was Evil Geniuses in round number six, and basically the way that they played it was the heavy roam presence up on that second floor, but they peeled off early, very early, actually. It was, I think, about 50 to 60 seconds in where EG began to sound the horns for the retreat, and then they got back to the site. And because of the way that they played, they caught a couple members of Empire very early and then just forced Empire to have to engage in fights that Empire was flying into blind, leaving, I believe, it was Shepard in a position where he was extremely vulnerable and lost the fight to Geo. While we were talking, Joystick got softened up by what I'm imagining is probably one or two bullets flying through some form of debris or wall because now he's sitting on almost literally one HP. It's been difficult for Joystick this round. He's still downstairs. That deep lurk that we know from Joystick so well often doesn't need a refrag or a trade-off because he's able to win those fights on his own. In weakened condition, it might be a little bit difficult. C4 goes out, and he'll take a chunk of HP away from Young, but that will be it. And Karzeka is none the wiser as to whether or not it hurt any member of EG. Young walking away from that alive is gonna be huge for Evil Geniuses moving forward, I'm sure. Evil Genius is now full top floor control. They need to start turning it into, though, sight pressure. Joystick, again, as you said, still in that deep roam. Looks like he's gone undetected thus far. Geo is droning out archives and detecting that, oh, hey, there's only one player actually holding this part of the site. Maybe we can just pressure straight on in. Those marks were very out of date, but that grenade had Scyther's name on it, and they'll miss as Shepard will try to hold down any push in towards Tellers from the main stairs. He's positioned as smoke so he can cut it off with any kind of plant denial that he wants. He uses one toxic canister with 30 seconds to go, so he's going to need to be a little bit better with his timing. He's still got two at his disposal, but there goes another. So he's got 17 seconds and one left. All right. I can deal with that timing. Dan will see what shelter above him slowly disappear as Young is inside of the site. Scyther finds NVK, but Empire might not be aware of where the position is. Joystick falls to Canadian, and Young will get the plant down successfully under the nose of Empire as Canadian's there to pick up yet another kill onto Scyther. It's a lot of patience from Empire right now inside of the site as Karzeka will wander around one of the cabinets inside of Archives, look around and see Young like a mother hen on top of the diffuser. He'll drop him quite well, and Young had no idea that that was coming. Gets absolutely rocked and knocked off as Empire don't know where the remaining members of EG are. 
Geo. G in a position now where they're gonna have to try to come back. Oh, Dan, a beautiful shot onto Geo. Does it look like it was gonna be a disable for a second there? And another, Dan on Skylight, tying all of this together, looking for another body. Oh, he grabs them all, three kills, and Dan is unstoppable up top. He'll shut down all of EG on his own and leave Shepard to now tie it up, as it'll be a very easy disable of the Diffuser and a round that EG had and looked to have fooled their opponents will go the other way. All on Dan. A round that EG just lost. Well, they they shouldn't have lost. They they had that round in the bag, and then Dan just started fragging on Akai using the pistol. I have no idea who the crowd is chanting for. Uh, let's go Empire, I think it's just... I thought it was Empire, but they've they've chanted EG before? Yeah, they're, um... I wouldn't say they're chanting for anyone in particular as much as they're chanting for a good match. I'd say that's probably what's going on here. Quite possibly. Also, I mean, there are a lot of fans from both teams in the crowd, to be honest. Yeah. We are on European soil. Yeah, but at the same time, EG, the OG team. A lot of fans here for EG. I've, talking to a lot of people who are like, yeah, we want EG to win this one. And I think I think there's a, like I said, there's a lot of mix. Empire has made an awful lot of fans since their triumph in Challenger League and the True. rise they've been on so far and how well they've done. But EG's got a very large, very vocal, and very established fan base, similar to some of the other big teams that have just been around for Ages. years, literally yeah. years. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine that the performance that we have seen in Milan so far is endearing quite a lot of people to Empire, or endearing Empire to them. I agree. Depending on the way you look at it. Empire have done an impressive job of bringing this back to a 5-5. Five, five. I remind you guys, we ended the first half 4-2, and then EG put themselves up 5-2 the first round of the second half, and now it's nice and even. It's a tactical timeout, though. It was, EG yeah. took the tactical timeout and won the next three rounds in a row. Empire took a tactical timeout and has now won the last three rounds in a row. Yeah, so will this be where it all kind of fitters out, or... I mean, what's gonna happen? Because the tactical timeout only goes so far, right? What comes next? Yeah, what comes next is the question. Basement defense here for Empire. They've had mixed success here. Lost it the first time, won it the second time. And the first time it was, I believe, from Evil Genius as a locker take, which is a little unorthodox. It's a good take, though. I believe the second time they lost it because of Joystick's amazing roam on CEO, and Canadian got shut down. There was so much time wasted by Team Empire and Joystick specifically. They couldn't, oh, Evil Geniuses couldn't recover. Canadian finds himself once again up top inside of CEO, doing his best for the entry. He's got Necrox below him. Two x Kairos already used, so Necrox has been able to grab two of those hatches. You got Soft Destruction 2 for EG in a lineup that has become all too familiar for them over the last couple rounds. A little bit of variation, you don't really need it, I suppose. But it does appear that this change with the way that the attack is going to happen is very straightforward. Instead of attacking lockers, as you mentioned, and instead of having Empire control that second floor for as long as they did, they're going to forfeit the ability to contest from server. And Young will be used both of his exothermic charges to open up everything. Interesting to open up that second wall. A lot of teams will leave it, leave it completely enclosed because you put yourself at a disadvantage often. You don't really have as many opportunities to hide. It's uh, definitely a preference change there from Evil Geniuses. Uh, some teams like to leave it closed. Oh, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. There you go, okay. Canadian did get it, but it took him one extra zap. That's both Evil Eyes done as well. Yeah, great job there to Evil Geniuses. And now a whole minute to attack following up that. They've got a nade kill onto Dan, and Scyther has been downed by the same nade. Beautiful job by Geo, doing a lot of damage. Scyther's back in it, but at such low HP. If he can land another nade, this is going to take care of Karzeka, who's playing in the hallway, but he'll move just in the nick of time. We'll go off at the wall here, and you'll see some fire go up, at least through the open hatch. But for the time being, EG has 30 seconds to find the remaining members that have not been softened up of Empire. BK just very rhythmically picking away at Shepard. A beautiful shot with Geo doing his damnedest as well, leaving Joystick as the one to try and come on in, and he will now be solely responsible for Empire's fortunes. EG look like they have everything in their favor to push on to match point. As the Diffuser goes down quite successfully, and Joystick will now tread carefully up the main stairs. Nestled in that barbed wire, there will be one member of EG staring him down. 
whether they will be able to find him or not. There will actually be two there, Joystick engaging, but expecting a push from inside of open area. He's going to have to look left and look right. I believe they call this the Kansas City Shuffle. It's when you look left, oh. they go right. It's a beautiful shot from Joystick, but Necrox will be there to trade off his teammate, and EG will find themselves on match point. Finally, that momentum that was gained from the timeout from Empire will wear off, and EG find themselves with a somewhat graceful recovery. Somewhat graceful, but not fully complete, as we are one round away from overtime, as well as one round away from map number two. Just depends on who takes it. Uh, evil geniuses, though, it looks so very strong. Going to CEO. That was the last site potentially for this first map. See, that was great what we just saw from the Pulse and the Valkyrie. From the position above on that hatch, it's easy to bounce a frag grenade off of the downed cart and blow up somebody playing at what is often a mirror window spot. There's no mirror window there, but you know that the Valkyrie is playing in that position. The Pulse was coaxed out of gold by the fact that it appeared that EG was sticking a plant. Now, in order to do that, you have to make yourself vulnerable to get the C4 out, and because of the fact that both of them pushed out at a time when Young looked to be baiting a plant, it was very easy for the grenade of Geo to be able to hit its intended target. So CEO. This is a site that is currently one and one for Team Empire. They've won it every single time. They looked pretty confident the last time they were here. A lot of it came down to their ability to just win gunfights. Straight up, walls got opened up, North Propel was a problem, and Empire peaked and won those gunfights. Now, on the side of Evil Geniuses, I'm curious to see what kind of strategy they're going to employ, because coming in from CEO just did not work out so great last time. Joystick fed off of them, if I recall correctly. It was went undetected downstairs. He's just been doing a number of times here on defense. Got a pick from, I believe, the top of server stairs onto the top of square. Very impressive. He's gonna have more pressure on him this time to do the exact same thing as Michael. The Canadian is reunited with Ash. That's is that, true. Is that a break case in case of emergency sort of deal? Break glass in um, case of emergency? No, I, I wouldn't say so. Canadian reliable Ash player. He's just gonna have to rotate onto it. I think just he wants to win gunfights. I mean, we talked about it last, or I just talked about it. The way that uh, Evil Geniuses lost the last time we were, they were here was they were losing a lot of gunfights. I feel like Canadian on Ash. Yeah, I, that's a fearsome. That's a fearsome duo. And if he plays it right, it might be all that his team needs to take this round. See if there's any ADSs inside of CEO. One flashbang from Canadian will get chucked on in. Nobody is actually sitting inside either B nor A. Scythers and Banana just lying underneath the castle. Barricade and Joystick and Shepard are inside of the peripherals, or the peripheries, rather, inside of conference as well as janitorial. Young was the very first pick. He was taken out early on after getting one of the walls open. He'll get away scot-free this time as the right panel to CEO gets opened up by that exothermic charge, and, well, he'll go on to drone and survey the damage that he's done. Over top of the left panel happens to be a lot of soft destruction that was caused by the defenders that might be indicative of a possible impact trick. It really depends on what the strategy is here, as you do have impacts in the hands of Dan on the castle. But he's used both of his impact grenades, so a moot point, I'm sure. Shepard taking quite a bit of damage, and Young will go in for the second exothermic charge, and look to be quite successful. Joystick goes for the runout, cuts down Canadian, but there's a C4, or there's a Claymore positioned right below it. So they'll trade it out, and Canadian will be pure utility. Dan now falls to, in, to Necrox, and EG are finding themselves in better shape here on CEO than they were before. Evil Geniuses look very strong right now. That pressure on North Windows was heavy from Canadian, and Necrox is going to take up the same position now on North Repel. 45 seconds, still plenty of time for EG to make this attack happen, and they're going to extend their lead by taking out Shepard. Necrox on the side there. It's just kill after kill for Evil Geniuses, and now it's just Karzeka and a one versus four for the hopes of overtime. He'll get one. Can he get the deny on the defuse? No, he cannot. But can he get in the post? His next question. He's doing a lot of damage to Young, but he's down and out of ammunition. He's got plenty of time here on this post for the diffuser. He's just got to play his cards right. Take the right engagements. And it seems like Evil Geniuses aren't going to give Karzeka any engagements to take. The diffuser is planted by the window. Ichi doesn't need to risk anything. C4 goes out, expecting someone outside of the breach. It's not going to happen. No connect there. To the top skylight, somebody on the window. 
Evil Genius is really well arrayed. He cannot run out because he won't have time to get back, and that's it. Round forfeited. Necrox gets the last kill, and Evil Geniuses take map number one in this best of three season nine finals. A valiant effort for Empire, but falling just short of being able to put away the team whose map they just played on. This is the best opportunity that this team has had in Evil Geniuses to be able to collect a championship since the Six Invitational in 2018. And for those of you uh, with good enough memories to recall that particular matchup, You'll remember that EG stormed out to a 2-0 map lead in a best of five, only to essentially get reverse swept. The same thing will need to happen here for Empire. They will need to win the next two maps in order to take the championship. So history would repeat itself should EG fail to claim the trophy. This is just, of course, a best of three. So it's not as much work to be done here by Team Empire, but still quite a lot. Now, I was really impressed at the start of this attack with how EG was coordinating and taking away the lanes that Empire was essentially giving them. Now, you know that with the way that most teams set up defenses, they'll be in a position to possibly contend both of the sites, but you're usually anticipating a push on either A or B, and because of that, your resources are stacked up accordingly. EG was able to basically dissect everything that Empire had through those first couple rounds and beat them in gunfights, beat them in information, and really get under the skin of Empire. And it did look like Empire was in a position where they were frustrated by it. You can see the body language and the way they were talking on their tactical timeout. And that's as good of an opportunity as we would get to hear or see what they're actually saying. But EG stayed the course. They didn't tilt at all, and they managed to do a great job over those last two rounds of getting the information, distributing it to the team, committing, and they got three diffusers down in the final three rounds, even though they lost one of those. That's pretty impressive. But we have meteor analysis to dive into, and that's where Milos and the analyst desk comes in. We'll hear their thoughts now. Thank you very much, Mr. Astronaut, AKA Intero. So gentlemen, an explosive game number one. Now, it's only bank. We're expecting it to go so so far, but EG really keep up the, the kind of tactical play they've been going through throughout this entire event. Yeah, and I mean, after it's been a very long time, as we've said, since we've seen, you know, EG in their top form, I think it's great to finally see, you know, I was saying before, the roles, the role switches and uh, the way that EG is really, you know, I'm just impressed with the, with the way that they're back to form. I feel the clash first round, it actually really made a difference. Yep. It was difficult for Empire to deal with. I, if I remember correctly, they, they won two CEOs. That was the first thing they, or the only thing they wanted to start with, and then went on to win, uh, win a basement later on. The Clash had a big impact there. Yeah, and I, I also want to emphasize, you know, how much on those CEO defenses, which were actually largely successful, the, o the first successful attack onto CEO is actually the very last round of the entire game. It often hinged around those north windows, and we've seen like how desperate some players actually go to try and take out that player on the north windows, including times when we saw a maestro or a doc jump straight out the window, find a kill knowing that they're going to die after that, because just taking out that player on north windows is so important. Yeah, and why is that? This is the player that usually just shuts down rotations. It's it's always like this. You know, we used to talk about Blackbeard as being this just wall in front of everybody firing down with whatever gun he's got. Why? To shut down rotations between sites. That's exactly what you have here. The windows are much more exposed. There's many, many angles to take care of them, but there's usually always a plan B, C, D, whatever, including that Claymore that you saw pre-placed by MVK just in case the dive out happened. It either kills the defender as they're running out for the kill, or it kills them right after they got it. Yeah, so one of the easy things we normally see people do is you always plant a guy in ATMs because you need to be careful of the lobby. That's yep. one of your, your concerns. You gotta be careful for the window jump outs. And the big problem there is that if, if you don't have ATM control, you might have a claimer out there, but you don't have enough claimers. Is there a Valcam out there? Is there anyone that has any clue where it is? Or even if it's just a one for one trade, it, you really want to be able to always come out on top when you have that that window control. All right, well, we want to talk about a specific round, specific plays, so let's all kind of come together and analyze it. We'll start with you, James. Let's roll the clips and really dive deep into it. Yeah, so look, EG may have won the entire map, but we've seen uh, a lot of good plays from Team Empire, especially on their defense. This is a great example, defending Tellers. As you can see, Smoke playing here on the side stairs and Kai actually playing inside of the Tellers, completely vacating out the archive site. And Evil Geniuses have control of the top floor, but they haven't found many picks through the floor. We're 
still in a five versus five, and Team Empire are clinging onto that numbers advantage. The key here is that we have all of these roamers for Empire who are just waiting for Evil Geniuses to flurry into the site so that Team Empire will still have their numbers in a post plan on the retake, which eventually works thanks to some fantastic gunplay. For me, the big issue here is that we don't see anything actually really happening up until there's 10 seconds left of the round. They do manage to salvage everything and actually get the plant down, but they don't manage to take the, the post plant. Yeah. The post plant positions are usually even more important than what you have. And EG actually had perfect post plant positions to fight against this. They had the top floor, they had angles from the stairs, they had angles as well from the, the back stairs. So everything was kind of locked down. And then this happens. Dan just comes around and Rarely do we see the 44 mag actually doing damage like this. But here we are. Comes around, kills everybody, and the round is won. And Empire, sense of urgency, yes, but not overwhelming. Keep their nerves cool. And this is something I was talking about with, with a few actual Russians. And they were telling me this is a very real thing. You know, you won't see, they won't really exude emotions. And, and Tarot and Kicks were talking about it on their side with, with EG being so much more hyped up once they went around or do something great. But when it comes to Russian players, it's not really the case. They'll be more reflective. You saw the difference between how Gotcha is kind of playing around his uh, squad mates every single round, how he's really high-fiving them, talking to everyone during the tactical timeouts. Not the case for Empire. A lot more straightforward, very mechanical. But that's how, that's a difference as well, a clash between them. Yeah, well, one of the things that Empire does have as a benefit of that is they're always very, very focused. They don't spend a lot of time getting emotional, which, you know, we all know that emotions can project you to give more than is, what in theory possible, but it can also cloud your vision when things get tough. And that situation, I think, is a great example of how Empire, they had a great strategy. They'd set up positions, such as an open rotation into admin uh, and archives, so that they could go for that late rotate, and they had the nerves to just wait for that perfect post-plant scenario to go for it. And All right. I've got to say, Empire looking pretty good. Very much the case. But that was a 7-5 on map one, Jamal Bank. We go to Oregon. Now, how is that going to play out? Because it's kind of up in the air. Everybody says, yeah, this is the map that, you know, where big teams go to die. But we have two pretty big teams on here. I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I know we say they don't get emotional. But last time, they got emotional when they got to the finals. So when things are really... They got tired, you know? You have to oil up the machine every night. Sure. I saw some smiles and I saw some, uh, some sad eyes as well, right? I think uh, th this must have been a bit of a, a rough game for them on bank. And I mean, sure, it's no no 40 round coastline, yeah. but it's a rough one. Yeah, and we have a lot of um, VODs of both of these teams on this map. They both played it yesterday in very convincing matches. Immortals were beaten 7-2 by Evil Geniuses and Empire also stole the win 7-3 against Dark Zero, despite Dark Zero's extensive stratting and extensive counter stratting that we know them for. I think this is a, a big toss up. We could see it lock out in 2-0, but I'm edging and I'm, I'm just so keen for map number three. If we can get there and Empire steal Oregon. Yeah, Alex, for you, do you think this is going to be a 2-0 sweep for EG or are we going to actually get Clubhouse? I want a third map, so I'm going to go with, with a 1-1. One, one. That's pretty darn fair. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Well, it's time to resume the action live from Milan, Italy. It's all on you yet again. Intero kicks. I need to hear your voices right here, right now. Take it away. That's a, a long time since somebody said that they want to hear our voices, Michael. Yeah. It, Seems like it feels nice, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it's you know, it steals a lot of confidence in me. I'm not Very gonna lie. Wholesome Milo. Thank you, Gasson. Thank you, Gasson. Now, the whole hopes of an entire region rest upon a team that tends to bleed blue, and Empire is going to need them to bleed over the next two games. As we'll head into Oregon, a map that managed to get through the map ban phase, and EG must show some comfort on here. They knew that they were going to be playing Immortals here yesterday. And now, they will be playing on it yet again. First ban coming out from Team Empire is going to be on a Monte, and they don't want to deal with any shields. And unsurprisingly, there goes Capital from EG. Yeah, it seems like Capital is going to be a perm ban there for Evil Geniuses against Team Empire. Sensible is the word I would use to describe that action by EG. The Montaigne in the same exact realm, <laughs> very smart. Montaigne is a tool that EG have been using very well at this tournament, especially Canadian. He's just been really doing well on that Montaigne. Maestro getting taken out here by Evil Geniuses as that's their last ban. And here we go, Team Empire get rid of Mira. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> I mean, I think they've banned Mira every single map so far. And I, 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 had to, I had to fact check that, but I'm pretty sure it's consistent. Now, with this, 
that means that we will have an Echo in play, which is not common. Not in this match, anyway. We saw Echo Band last map by Evil Geniuses, and they switched it up to Maestro, clearly. Change of mentality there for EG. Looks like it's going to be a top floor defense here for Empire to start things off. The crowd is getting hyped up, rightfully so. Dorms is not that peculiar to start off on. No, it's not, of course not. I mean, basement or dorms, either one, you're, you're good. Tower, then we start going, ooh, look at that, that's interesting. Kitchen, then we start going, wow, that's hmm, interesting. But uh, yeah, top floor, basement, you're, you're still very much in the comfort zone when it comes to Oregon. Empire, just gonna set themselves up here on that side. They are bringing the Echo. So this is what was not allowed in the last map as it was banned. Left unbanned by EG this time around. Very interesting. We'll see how this changes the dynamic of defense for Empire. Oh, and you know what else is not banned? What's not banned? A glance. Oh, and it'll be played right away? Yeah. Canadian on that roll, though. We've got a couple people on EG that can fulfill the role of Glaz, who, yeah. if you watch the reveal panel, you'll see that he's going to be changed a little bit. But they haven't gone into effect yet, so you can still continue to push pretty much, I, I would use the word uh, unabated. Yeah, push um, ridiculously through your own smokes and see everybody. Mm -hmm. um, that's going away. I can't wait for that. Now, instead of banning the Glaz, Empire banned the Montaigne. Okay, so you can't... You can't do it right, right? If you're if you're evil, if you're Empire, you're either banning one or the other. You can't do both, so you have to uh, you have to take what you get. And uh, Evil Genius is likely going to make full use of that glass. They've always been a team that is good at setting up a glass on an angle to just win fights. The way that Empire is going to attack here whenever they are on attack is they're going to clear through tower first. And it doesn't appear to be the way that EG is going to play this one out at all. But man, Joystick's in a position where he might be able to see the head of Canadian. It would be a tough shot to make. He gets thrown out a small tower, though, and in pursuit, there's Necrox. Cannot in win an engagement. Joystick will get away with a tiny bit of HP lost, but for their trouble, EG losing about a minute in that process, while the rest of the team is likely still trying to figure out where the members of Empire are. It's been a great crowd all weekend. It certainly has, Parker. And it's been absolutely fantastic for these finals, as is deserving for these teams. Evil Genius is still setting up their attack. Looks like they're gonna be setting up for a master take slash west window. They got the glass set up on west window. That's a really safe place to have. Oh, and this is beautiful. Young has opened up the locker's wall. That's going to allow for him to watch the bottom of white stairs. And it seems like EG actually, they want to clear out underneath. Ooh, dancing with death is young, but he will survive. They're nearly lost his head. It does appear that Joystick might be down inside of the cafeteria slash dining hall looking to go for a run out. And if there's nobody there from EG committed to this, then he could be in danger. But nope, there you go, inside a dining hall, it'll be EG taking full control of that. And Joystick, very limited HP. As once again, he had been put in that engagement, as you said. This setup from EG is beautiful. Necrox has the flank. Joystick can't go anywhere. He doesn't have the ability to set up a rotation. They're definitely going to start clearing out ADSs, and there's the nade! They just beautifully executed onto Kitchen. That was about as calculated as it gets. Karzeka is still inside of Classroom, and he might actually be able to wreak some havoc if he goes unnoticed. But overall, beautiful clear there up the bottom or middle floor from EG. Canadian just missing his shots ever so slightly, and Geo gets taken down from Dan, but Karzeka will finish him off. EG's now inside of sight, and Young will just persevere. Amidst the smoke, he's got the smoke right next to him. He'll waltz in, but no, the shotgun of Shepard will shut him down. Trade it off with the PMM out of Canadian, and EG will take the first round. What a beautiful round from Evil Geniuses. And the last kill on a Claymore. That Claymore was inside of Kitchen slash Cafeteria on the doorway instead of going through the rotation that made by the thermite hole, um, hole thermite breach rather. Uh, Karzak had decided to use the door. It didn't check for the laser. Unfortunate if you are an Empire fan. But yeah, that was a great execution from Evil Geniuses. You really got to hand it to them. They set up and knocked down the roamers downstairs perfectly. 
followed that up with just a straight rush in through West Window. <laughs> they didn't need North Window pressure, it seemed, to deal with anybody in dorms. And everything worked out great, if you're evil geniuses. On the other hand, Empire, a little bit shaky there. I know a lot of people expect Empire to be able to take Organ going into the, these finals. And that's why a lot of people would expect this to go to map number three, Clubhouse. That first round is a really good sign from Evil Geniuses. Consensus among North America and a lot of the people that play against them is that EG tends to be one of the best Oregon teams in the whole world. They're certainly, I would say, the best team in North America when it comes to Oregon in terms of international success and regional success as well. But the best team in the whole world right now at Oregon is probably Team Empire. That's the thing. And to have EG be able to match up against them, depending on what happens over the next couple rounds, will give you a better example of how prepared EG was for this matchup. You know that Empire are very strong on three maps, Consulate, Oregon, and Coastline. You can only ban one of them, and Empire will immediately pick the other. Where do you want to go? EG decided to ban Consulate, which makes a lot of sense. Coastline and Oregon tend to be very strong maps for EG, Consulate less so. And then, additionally, you have Clubhouse as your tiebreaker, which EG is not bad on by any stretch of the imagination. But neither are Empire. And I mean, Clubhouse getting through, as the analyst desk showed, they were gobsmacked by the fact that Fnatic received a 7-0 drubbing at the hands of Empire, and, then... and yet EG let it go through the ban phase when they very easily could have banned it out. It was definitely an interesting play by Evil Geniuses, but I'm guessing they were just thinking to themselves, we're not going to let that happen to us. And, well, maybe they won't. I mean, based on what we've seen on Oregon, they, we might not even get there. It's only one round in, though. Way too early to call. <laughs> Again, it will be a top floor defense from Team Empire. And Evil Geniuses have decided to go with a different strategy. Love the fact that they're adjusting so quickly. Necrox is gonna get, yeah, that's a free pick right there on Decyther, who decided to peek one of the north windows. Yeah, and on those double windows inside of dorms, the problem is, is that when there's a Capitao on the board, it's very challenging to hold those because of the way that the asphyxiating bolts from Capitao go down. But he's been banned out here. Number one, because evil geniuses likely have a way around a Capitao being on the board, but additionally, you know how strong he tends to be in the hands of Team Empire. There's two different players on Empire that can run a Capitao, and well, one of them happens to be Joystick, who's dead. Necrox with a second kill, it'll be an easy clear. Karzeka on the roam will take out NVK. He's inside a meeting hall, and, well, Necrox will fall off of the drone just in case Karzeka decides to wander his way through meeting hall in towards the pantry, whether it's reinforced or not. That's information that EG might not have at their disposal. Necrox gets cut down to size by Shepard, though, likely playing from above down below the kids' dorms in the line of sight beneath him. Also, you've got Karzeka now over by Big Tower, and while it's an MP7, that might not be the best at the longest of ranges, doesn't have an optical to suit it, it can still do quite a bit of damage. Karzeka's roams have been amazing so far. He has been the saving grace of, of Empire for both of these rounds. Uh, they didn't win the last round, but he was in the position to potentially win it for them. He is in the position to potentially win it again! A beautiful shot onto Canadian, and that's gonna give Team Empire the man advantage. Very important kill just now. You can see that evil geniuses are starting to hesitate. They've got 30 seconds, yes, thanks to their great efficiency on this attack, but can they make this execution happen? The goo traps are gonna make Geo's life really miserable. Young will be eliminated, making it just Geo against three. He finds one, he's gonna find two more. Pushing through the smoke with the goo trap and it's not gonna happen. Shepard shuts him down and here we go. 1-1, one, one. first round there for Empire. And ultimately what it came down to was Karzeka. Yes. Karzeka almost single-handedly saving that round, if not entirely saving that round for his team on that unpredictability. Channeling the strategy that Fnatic had used and a lot of teams use, which is in the mid-round, you head for the hills and you just find yourself in positions that your opponents aren't aware of. Absolutely agree with you. Karzeka, great round there for him individually. You know, following those tracers, there you go. It was a good holdout from Empire, a round that looked to have started to go the way of Evil Geniuses based on those two early picks from Necrox, but just slipped out of their grasp. It's a beautiful job there to both teams, honestly. And this is what you get, the finals of the finals of season nine, the top of Siege. Dare they call it the cream of the crop? The cream of the crop. The cream always rises to the top. It's true, it does do that, yeah. But. So, laundry supply room being the usual site for most teams to start off on, though Dorms does tend to come in there too. 
and it will be the second, well, second total, third in the round count. <laughs> and it's going to be, I think, a very comfortable place for Team Empire. They don't have a mirror window, but of course they're used to that, as they ban mirror pretty much all the time. Looks like Empire's gonna be committing to a very heavy west side roam. Utility invested, players positioned, and ready to receive evil geniuses on the roam clear, should it come. It's not necessarily a given. Evil geniuses are good at reading the setup from their opponent and going for a different tank altogether. And EG looks to want to take from construction and tower. If that is the take that EG commits to, then they will have, well, they won't have to deal with a west side roam. It'd be wasted effort from Team Empire. We've seen that before. We saw it on bank by the server stairs. No Hibana as well means that the push that's going to come out from EG will only be able to get two of those hatches, presumably the one inside of the main lobby. And then, what do you think? You think the hallway or... The hallways. You think it'll be hallway? They're both actually open right now, but if, if they were reinforced, I would open the hallway. I mean, if you're going to commit this hard to a meeting hall hold, or even upstairs in Attic, which is where Geo spots one member of Empire, you got to have an escape hatch, and that's exactly what it's going to be. Joystick's still in a position where he's going to be able to win almost any heads-up gunfight. He's also sitting on top of an ADS. He's got Dan down beneath him. So the Mute is going to find another drone. And this information denial that's going to come out from the Mute Jammers might prove to be tough for EG to engage. They know that Joystick is still in there as the Tracers will fly by the head of Geo. She can open a window trying to alleviate some of this pressure as Joystick will now decide to head out of Attic. Putting up a small kill hole for himself should he need it. Probably the right call here for Joystick to play a little bit passive and fall back. Evil Geniuses do have tower control, but they're not going to force the engagement with Joystick. They know he's capable of hitting those shots. EG are very wary of executing, given the fact that they don't know where Karzeka is as well. So three bodies from Empire that are all deeply off-site. And, I mean, you can go for broke, and you can push on in. But the problem is, is that you do so at your own peril. A lot of teams will begin to execute and then get completely run over by the retake that comes out. There's actually four bodies now, as it appears that Scyther is up top too. So this might only leave Shepard on site all by his lonesome. That can prove to be quite damning in the latter part of a round. I don't know what Canadian is doing there, as he can't shoot the castle barricades anymore. Geo will open it up, and oh, he'll be able to take Dan down, and Geo should be safe for the time being, as Karzeka will try to get back to site as fast as he can. He's at three speed, he'll go through the main lobby, and there might be somebody to catch him out, as Geo will crawl to safety, and 40 seconds left will set them up in perfect position. NBK does find Joystick, and it's once again likely going to come down to Karzeka and the impact that he can have on this round. You can see the Castle Barricades were set up in, in expecting this eventuality of the take from Evil Geniuses, but it is not going to be an impediment thanks to the Sledge. 25 seconds left, Canadian can still see through those smokes, and he's going to hold on to the hallway. Necrox's going for the plant, and he's going to stick it. He's got cover from Geo. Empire doing their best with the gas canisters, but they're not ticking away at Necrox. A plant will go down with a man advantage. This looks unwinnable for Empire, but is going to try and correct that by taking down MVK, the flank watch in meeting hall. Two players pushing from downstairs, one upstairs from Empire. Scyther and Shepard doing their best to retake their own site. Young is going to finally shut down that flank of Karzeka, and it's just the two defenders, the anchors on site, and they'll be shut down by Evil Geniuses. A beautiful execution straight into B, and a plant on default plant spot. Great execution, and Karzeka almost breaking the back of EG on that defense. If it weren't for the fact that you had Young dedicated to flank watch, everybody else from EG was too preoccupied with what was going on with both Scyther and Shepard, trying to ensure that nobody went for the disable onto that diffuser, which had been planted just beside the bomb. Ultimately, ruthless aggression and a lot of precision from EG there. Really, most of it falling into the hands of Canadian after EG had taken this map control that they had so desired. Inside a meeting hall, there's Karzeka taking down NVK, but he wouldn't be able to do all that much left as you had Young very far up inside of Attic. You have to give a lot of praise to Canadian because if it weren't for that reactive shot, once the castle barricade disappeared, well, what ends up happening? Dan kills Geo, Canadian likely misses his shots, and even if you still do get Dan, you have Geo removed from the equation. In this case, the, Dan, but the down but not out was for Geo a saver, and for EG too, because you had the sledge to be able to open up another castle barricade, frag grenades there, and then another gun just to watch from afar. You get kind of boxed in as the site downstairs in Oregon is a bit claustrophobic. So don't expect an easy rotate out of laundry or supply when you find yourself at a disadvantage when it comes to numbers. 
Because Dorms is locked for yet another round and Tower and Kitchen don't tend to be places that the defense like to play, it'll be another Laundry and Supply Room defense for Empire, who'll change things up. Dan will be off of mute and he'll be onto the Kaid, but everything else will be the same. It was a heavy investment inside a meeting hall that stalled EG out quite a bit, but once EG did get it open, the dominoes begin to fall. How much of an investment is Empire going to have? As last time, they had four bodies off site. I expect a bit more of a conservative play from them. Dan has brought the Kaid in an effort to hold on to that meeting hall, try and deny the thermite, exothermic charge that was coming from the tower, but it looks like EG are going to clear from an entirely different location this time around. This, now, see, this is where you want to have the West Rome, right? If you're Empire, and you do still have it, Karzeka up by Dorms. He's going to be a very important force here for his team. Canadian already in Kitchen. He does have an opponent above him, whether he knows it or not. That's Karzeka still inside of Dorms. Geo is going to drone that out, though, I believe. He's going to look for the angle. Yes, indeed, he's waiting for an opportunity. They, EG need to commit fully to clearing out these roamers on the top floor if they actually want to go for a west side clear. Karzeka's going to give a lot of problems, and so is Joystick as he takes down NVK. That rotation through Attic working great for Team Empire. Geo's going to have to watch two separate angles here now. He's got a grenade primed and ready for the Ella. It's got Karzeka's name on it, and no! It will not go off. It'll ring the ears and a bit of tinnitus on the Ella, but that will be it. As it'll puzzlingly did not affect Karzeka whatsoever. Geo's in a major predicament now, though, because he's going to play this repel, and that frag grenade looks like it should be able to take Karzeka, but no! Oh my goodness, Karzeka still surviving for the time being, as another member of EG will fall. This time it's Canadian on the Ash. A 5v3 with Empire on Laundry Supply Room, and most of this action has occurred off-site. It's going to buy a lot of time for Empire for when that EG push does happen, should it happen at all. It does seem like EG need to adjust their strategy, and it looks like they are going to do just that, appearing to adjust to a construction take. Necrox maybe looking for a flank. That's probably the right call. You could stack all three of your players to take from construction, but if Necrox can come up from a flank, this is actually winnable. Young will take down Dan in main lobby. Geo gets Shepard as well. EG are rallying right now, and Young is in sight. Necrox also hunted Joyce. What is happening? Young going for a diffuser plant. Scyther on low HP. Karzeka far from the site. He's going to have to come back. And Geo has the cover on lock. How did they get Beautiful. away with this? Necrox takes down Scyther, and it's just Karzeka in a 1v3. This is absolutely unbelievable. From a 3 versus 5 to a 1 versus 3 in the favor of Evil Geniuses now. A shutdown by Necrox. A beautiful play from Evil Geniuses. They just walk into sight. Whoever just made that call, as Geo was on repel, you knew you had two bodies off site. You look and you say, supply room is completely free. Let's break open the wall and just go in like a bulldozer. And that's exactly what happens. Geo rotates all the way down, and that's a masterful play from EG. I don't know if that was Canadian, I don't know if that was Geo, but massive props to whoever did that, as that could prove to be a very decisive round in the long run here. Wow. Yeah, that was just absolutely unbelievably. It was just. How did. How did Empire not stop that is the question. And again, there's that flank from Necrox that I talked about. You can push all of your players in through construction if you really want to, but if you run one of them through the laundry staircase, just one of them, then it sets you up to win the round. That one player inside of laundry, if left alone on the side of Empire, might have been able to salvage that round if given an opportunity, but he wasn't because Necrox played it perfectly. He timed his push exactly when it needed to be. Got to hand it to him. It's a tactical timeout coming in from Empire here. And while well, they're going to do that to try and regain their composure, on Bank, when they called it map number one, they won the next three consecutive rounds. Without really breaking much of a sweat on them, too, if I do say so. Yeah. The problem with Empire now is that, well, Dorms has opened up. So you could conceivably see that, well, they have the benefit of the site working for them. But then they'll have to go back to laundry likely after that, unless they roll the die on either a kitchen or a tower defense, which is exceedingly unlikely. 
And where do you go from here? Well, then you switch sides, and EG will likely start on one of the dorms laundry sites themselves. So not just prepare yourself for the next two rounds, as EG did when they pulled their timeout at the exact same time for the record on bank. They took it in round number four, or round number five, rather, and then set themselves up for a side switch here. But Empire is going to try to slow down the momentum of EG. And, it, I mean, it may work, but we'll see. Right now, it's looking like Evil Geniuses are just straight playing better. I mean, the strategy in that last round was really beautiful. I love that they didn't just consolidate their last three players and they split up. Most people wouldn't think to do that when you're at such a heavy disadvantage. And it's not just that. Just in general, Evil Genius is playing on a different level right now. Great to see. Especially if you're an EG fan. Just in general, if you're a fan of Siege. Now, Empire. They are definitely a super team. One of the, they definitely, the youngest super team, to be sure. But they are one, and they have the capability to come back here. You cannot count them out, especially on a map like Oregon. Yes, Evil Genius is good here, but so is Empire. Just gotta give him a chance. And everything could change too when you switch sides, right? That's the yeah. other thing to keep in mind is that Empire could be so methodical on their attacks and just completely overwhelm evil geniuses that even if you do end this half with a four round lead, which is what we tend to see, a four two split, then everything can change in the blink of an eye. Absolutely. Necrox doing his duty here and clearing out the Legion Goo traps. That's fantastic to see with the IQ. That's going to open up a push onto White later on. However, uh, Dan will probably put another trap there. Just, just good efficiency from the IQ. A Nomad being brought as well from Evil Geniuses alongside Geo on the Ash this time instead of Canadian. So a small change here, just bringing a different kind of aggressiveness and also an ability to lock down where Empire is going to be. I mean, you're expecting that there likely will be a run out from dining at some point when you have to attack this site because you find yourself vulnerable on those two windows. And with somebody like Joystick, and as we can see, there's a Valkyrie camera on the board. What's going to happen here? A possible run out. So Scyther will be looking for that as he tosses out a Nitro Cell and it won't find anything. There's more information that's going to be put out for the rest of his team as he just watches those two windows. And that's, wow, a push that's going to happen, maybe, no? It looked like Joystick was priming himself and readying himself for a run out. But no, there's going to be a frag grenade get tossed in. And oh, Ooh. down goes Scyther. He'll be on cam duty. And oh. Necrox is watching. Joystick will not be able to get out of the dining hall at all. Karzek is in a position to possibly go for a run out himself as he's taking up residency downstairs. But wow, that, that might have been a bait from Evil Geniuses. It absolutely did look as they had the camera outside. They didn't shoot it. And there goes Dan. Empire are falling apart right now. Evil Genius is looking to put it in a 4-1. They have 40 seconds to execute on two defenders. There is still, well, no, actually no, there is no C4 in the hand of the bandit. But Shepard's gonna take down Canadian, so here we go, Empire fighting back. Young's gonna get that plant though, just in sight. And that's by Dorms. Shepard and Generator trying to retake to the best of his ability, but he will be shut down by MVK. It's all on Karzeka. He's been a hero for this team in the past. In fact, the only round one was thanks to Karzeka. But can he really clutch in a 1v4? Make that a 1v3 as he takes down Geo. Beautiful pick there. But he's got a retake now, and the enemy knows exactly where Karzeka is. No C4 again in hand is such a detriment in this situation. Mark's coming out, clearly, based on that pre-fire through the floor but no dice, and it's going to be a shutdown there by Necrox. Empire down 4-1 on Oregon of all maps. Evil Geniuses might take the title, surely, of best, play, uh, best team on Oregon if they win this. I mean, a lot of people were questioning it. It was, it was who's, the, who's really the best team on Oregon? Is it, is it Empire? Is it Evil Geniuses? We don't know. Uh, but right now, it's looking a whole lot like EG. And again, that right there, that kill from Necrox at the end, there's a Valkyrie cam outside on the north. I, and there's an IQ in play. I think it might have been a conscious bait to leave the camera, allow Joystick that information to take him out with the IQ. Notice that the IQ was prone outside of the, the camera's visual range. I don't know, maybe I'm reading too far into it, but if it was uh, a, a decision made by EG, beautiful. 
And I mean, Necrox was waiting for somebody to take out that Claymore, which is what Joystick did, and he basically found himself in a position that a lot of players on attack find themselves in with Frost Mats. Do you go for the Frost Mat, or do you go for the person in right. front of you that's going to be waiting? And it indeed did appear to be a great bait. So with that said, a 4-2 scoreline for Empire is still definitely doable, but EG is, for the time being, literally beating Empire senseless across this map. Yes. And they will be saved by the fact, Empire will be saved by the fact, that the sides will swap at some point. You can try and muster up some momentum, but it didn't help Fnatic much in the previous matchup with Empire involved. And it might not hear final defense for Empires. They'll go back down to Laundry Room. They have not been successful here at all. This will be their third foray to the site. I just want to point out, I think that is a four-wall Electro Claw. That's pretty magnificent. Last time around when we saw this laundry take was when Geo decided to run down through construction, open up the wall, then push on in. There's still a castle in play for Empire, and I think you can justifiably ask how good that castle has actually been for the overall strategy for Team Empire. They might not have a lot of opportunities to switch out other operators, but I gotta say, the castle has not necessarily been the play with what they've been attending. I think the castle has been okay, but it's Geo on the sledge that's been countering it so well. Like, I understand why Empire's being the castle, I agree with you, it's not working. But again, that just, to me, comes down to Geo to using his hammer well. Joystick going once again in the same position over by the master bedroom, opening up these dual holes to be able to look through it with three ADSs <laughs> positioned. That's quite an investment of utility. And they'll put Geo in a position where he might just engage, expecting a cross from Joystick over towards the armory side. It's not the correct read, but he doesn't necessarily know that. Still just waiting and playing by the sandbags as Joystick and dare he fight NBK on this confrontation. This is where an EMP would be very efficient, but they might be saving it for something else entirely. Dan's gonna take down Geo from Meeting Hall. Great job there from Dan. Despite the Meeting Hall wall being opened up by the exothermic charge, he wins his fight, standing firm. This means that any push that might also happen down into the soft walls over by laundry or supply will be negated. Dan, three kills. He's the man. Damn, Daniel, but he'll be finished off as he's fallen, but not completed. It's Necrox and Canadian now to push on to the site. Necrox will walk down the laundry room stairs. There's a hole above him with joystick still there. And it does appear that Empire will be able to stop the bleeding for the time being. A beautiful shot from Canadian onto Scyther. Dan is still downed. And well, it's a 1v5 that has turned into a 1v4. You have to be quite precise here. Canadian will edge on up 40 seconds. He doesn't have a ton of time. He expects Joystick to be playing around this position, and he'll be finished off. Empire will be able to regain some hope of keeping this map close, and they'll head on into their defense, or their attacking round with EG moving to defense, with Empire taking the round beforehand. Did a great job there from everyone on the side of Empire, but Dan especially. He really just has been landing his shots as that Kaid. I think there are certain players that excel with this dual DMR setup on the Kaid, the pistol and the uh, shotgun there, both effectively the same type of weapon. And Dan is one of them. He makes it look easy. It'll be done. And Karsak, or rather Joystick on this position, on the west side, not being cleared out. That's the really dangerous thing. You know. It would take probably 35 seconds if you want to split one person away from that uh, tower take and move them over to west window to deny the position that Joystick was playing there. But it would certainly be worth it. Um, and I'm sure in hindsight, evil geniuses will think about that. But all things considered, a 4-2 in the first half, EG are sitting pretty. It wasn't a, it's not a 5-1, sure, but hey, <laughs> they've got to be comfortable. There's no mirror in play and there's no maestro, so you don't what, double reinforce this wall and then you echo from longer angles. I mean, you do have an echo in play. Yeah. Sit inside of there, fully reinforced. Empire is bringing a Hibana or a Hibana instead of a Thermite, so you have the longer range ability to open up holes into that wall, providing that there isn't any denial that goes on it. There will likely be a mute jammer placed down by Geo, or that at least should be the assumption as it was him reinforcing those walls. Necrox is actually playing the pixel angle uh, oh, on the tower. This is, uh, okay, so usually as an attacker, you can cut off rotation through tower by looking through this, but if Necrox plays it aggressively, he will get the advantage, and he does have it. 
Oh, he's gonna miss a lot of his shots. Karzeka, though, eats one bullet. EG are well aware that Empire always pushes from tower. Everybody knows that. You as a casual viewer can determine that if you watch a couple matches of Oregon of Empire. So yeah. if you stick some bodies out there and you can control it for quite a bit of time, then maybe force Empire to waste some utility in the process. But EG, after doing a bit of damage to Karzeka, as you had mentioned, from Necrox playing on that angle, they're going to just completely go away. They will run back to the defense or the hold that they have on the defense downstairs and allow Empire to drone out Meeting Hall and then take the rest of Tower. I think another thing that's really noticeable is how slow Empire have been recently on their attacks. Um, just in this tournament, too, it, it does seem like Empire are starting to pump the brakes ever so slightly. And that's not necessarily a bad thing if you're a fan of Empire or if you're Empire yourself, uh, themselves. But uh, it is noticeable, and it might be something that evil geniuses are trying to play around with that early retreat. Yeah. I mean, it's not always a bad idea to fall off, too. Yeah. If you, if you know that you've done what you needed to do, maybe do some damage to somebody, maybe waste some time, even maybe waste some drones. That's all you need from that altercation. Now, down below, inside of what is called blue or tarps, Scyther had droned out Young. He loses the drone in the process, but then a smoke canister will come on out. Young to his detriment, will not be able to run out as there is a Claymore in place that will stop him. And what a nice shot on the Canadian as that wall will blow open. And I don't know if he was aware of the fact that he had been spotted and seen. And there's another one that's going to go, and it's Young, oh, no. and it's Joystick there, an Empire. Absolutely firing up the war machine at this point. All of that stems from the one Excaros from Habana in Meeting Hall, opening this hole right here to kill Canadian. If that hadn't happened, Canadian would still hold the hold tower. And if Canadian were holding tower, then we would see Young still holding blue. I believe there's still at least one Yokai in play from NVK, and you've got two ACOGs as well, so you can play a farther angle if you need to. It's gonna be Necrox sitting by that wash basin with an ACOG on his own and a deployable shield there to possibly take and attract some bullets. With Geo playing the much closer angle. And all of Empire will push from the tower, unsurprisingly. You expect that to happen. Still has it. Necrox is there just waiting for somebody to greet him, but nobody is taking the fight for the time being. And the MP will go off as the plant from Shepard will be attempted. And there is a yokai in place, but it will get shot out. And this is Empire possibly being able to seize control of the site. Down goes Hibana, and EG will take two kills, but Geo falls, and he'll be finished off by Karzeka. Successful Diffuser will go down from Empire in their very first round and their very first attack. They won't be able to get out of there, but Karzeka goes to NVK as well. Scyther and Shepard will retreat to Bunker, and they'll just sit and wait and try to watch that Diffuser as NVK will move on up very very patiently. The IQ gets spotted in Scyther. Two massive kills. You need that if your Empire. You'll close the gap, setting a good pace and a good tone for their attack. And EG will fall short on Laundry Supply Room with Empire now taking two in a row. So that's 3-4 now. Empire still at the disadvantage, but they're, like you say, closing the gap. It's looking good. This is the Empire we're used to seeing on Oregon. It's gonna to be top floor defense from Evil Geniuses now to adjust based on what we've been seeing. The basement's not fantastic. So the C4 midair, by the way, that, uh, yeah, he still had it. It actually got shot out of the air by Empire, as you just witnessed there on the replays. Beautiful job uh, by Empire salvaging that. It almost would have been a plant denial, which would have been cool. But not the case for Evil Geniuses. Great lockout from, e, uh, from Empire. Isolating tower, and then actually one of their more efficient takes recently. Props to them for that. Looks like it's going to be a top floor defense here from Evil Geniuses. Why not put Empire's attacks to the test, right? Yeah, figure out what you're dealing with. I mean, basement, obviously. Empire takes tower again. Go figure. Yeah. Um, EG fell off of it, I think a little bit too early, but probably the right call. And now, they're probably going to expect a tower take again from Empire, but this time they'll have a little bit more distance from it. It's not uncommon for EG to also perch a couple defenders up on the top of tower in T3. And with the Kappa Tau not available, that's still a valuable or a, you know, a viable strategy for EG to do just that. The asphyxiating bolts from Kappa Tau make it hell to defend that third floor of tower, but I mean, you don't have that. It's a tool that Empire will be without, not just through the first map, but the second map, and will likely be the attacking ban as well on Clubhouse. Long range in spades here for Evil Geniuses as they'll bring two ACOGs this time, and unsurprisingly, it'll be a tower take from Empire. The more things change, the more they stay the same. 
Canadian is inside of Attic. And if that wall leading all the way over to Tower is opened up, it's possible that Canadian will be able to see a member of Empire. And would you look at that? The wall's not open, but it's soft. This might be a trap. It's an opportunity, too, at the same time. Canadian is going to open up 51 window, or highway window, some call it. Going to go for a free fire. It actually takes out some of the Excaros thanks to this unreinforced wall. We'll go back for more. Does manage to take out enough to deny a crouch hole. So that's pretty good from Canadian. And that's huge because there's only one set of Xkaros left. It's a soft wall. You know that if you put them down, well, there's going to be a problem. And you can shoot away at the wood, but if the studs still remain, you won't be able to crawl through it. And that therein lies the problem. Looks like it's going to be a prone hole that's situated on the other side of the attic in a position in which if somebody wants to shoot it from EG, they will be very vulnerable. And well, EG has decided better of it. They're not going to be there contesting Attic at all. They've done the damage that they required, taken the only hard breach away, but keep in mind there's a sledge on the board. So if Karzeka wants to, he can just go and open it on up. That's not what he's going to do for the time being. He's going to try and figure out if there's anybody playing inside of dorms. Heavy emphasis being placed here on dorms from the Empire, and it's going to be oh! a triple for oh! NVK! Oh! Absolutely beautiful! Scream into your mic! Scyther does shut down MVK, but it's damage done. And Evil Geniuses in such a tremendous lead. They call it a highway, and MVK was cruising, Michael, on that one. Yeah. Incredible effort, and Empire allowed them this opportunity to get back into the game, though. Two kills. They'll finish off MVK, and then additionally take out Canadian. Now Necrox, too! What? MVK's effort is being squandered for the time being, and now Scyther is inside of Dorms. This could get very messy for EG. They'll need to hang on for the time being. Oh. But Young, a beautiful shot. And where is Dan as he might expose himself? He'll find it, but they trade it off. EG will take that round, propelling themselves forward by one. Safe to say, NVK will save the day. And it was a beautiful play. Oh, baby, a triple. Evil Genius is absolutely beautiful round there and all stemming from NVK's run out on highway to get three kills. Nice and easy. This is absolutely wonderful. Empire seemed like such a strong team and they still do, but this right here. Oh man. Triple kill. Yeah, you can hear it in all its guttural <laughs> magnificence. There's the shutdown, but uh, it's a given, right? Can't really question it. That shot right there from Young also, that shot saved the match and the round as well. He managed to win an engagement that I think it's safe to say he should not have won. Uh, it was Young in the disadvantage when it comes to the peaker advantage. He was actually the one being peaked and he still managed to land that shot beautifully onto the head of his opponent inside of dorms. Now this is curious. Another thing, Scyther was in dorms with the diffuser in hand and he decided to go hunting. That might be a pretty, well, I mean, it, it was a mistake. And it, it, we know that, but he obviously didn't know what was dealing or uh, what he was dealing with in his proximity. He wanted to be safe, I get that, but man, unfortunately that he didn't even try to fake it out. So basement defense here from Evil Geniuses. They have not been able to make this work just yet. Well, they've only tried one time. So that's, that's not really a, a great record to reference. Empire going for a tower take, it looks like, again, based just solely on the spawns. It looks like Evil Geniuses are actually going to contest it this time around. Necrox finds himself at T2, going down to T1. No, nope, back up to T2. He's <laughs> decisive as to what he's trying to accomplish here, but he's playing on the tower stairs, waiting for an engagement. Mounting pressure on Empire here as they see this game slowly slipping away from them, and the trophy as well as it's very easy for them to take control of tower when there's no real presence from EG. Down goes Scyther. I don't know what the IQ was attempting. Uh -oh. oh, there you go, inside of Bunker. Just pushing on in, but Young was in this exact position before. Right, he had to have known this was going to happen. Scyther with a pre-fire, but he loses the fight anyway. Canadian is still playing that position we saw to cover uh, Young's, well, flank, and it's just everything's working for, uh, for uh, Evil Geniuses now. And Scyther was the one who saved the day last time, was able to dispatch all of the electronics. He got the yokais as well, and then was the one to collect the final two kills on this push last time. That's a damning kill 
for EG and a big loss for Empire. Additionally, Dan, opening up this wall where Canadian was playing, that was a big difference maker. And the ex Kairos look like they will go down and, well, there's a mute there. It appears they'll shoot away at it. And I don't know what's going on, whether the EMP just did not go off or not, but EG looks to be able to have a bit of fortune and luck on their side here. Yeah, it looks like the Mute Jammer might have saved things there. Well placed by Geo, if that's the case. And now Empire in dire straits. They've only got a minute left, and where are they attacking? What's the plan here? They will just literally need to beat EG in straight up fights, coming down either the stairs or possibly dropping one of the hatches. And EG knows that this is what's the, what they have to do. If EG chooses to peek this, then the disarray that we currently see Empire in oh. will be dove upon! And two huge kills from Evil Geniuses, as Empire will now decide to take to the back stairs. Canadian and Harry Potter, and he's working with some magic as he finds yet another. No, the down on Karzeka, but they'll know that he'll have to be picked back up, picked back up as Karzeka will revive Shepard. 30 seconds left, and four members of EG with the dock still on the board. You have to drop through this hatch, and it will, might be to your undoing. A drone will go out as there's still some precious time for Empire to get some information. It'll be a split push now as Shepard heads towards the main lobby, and he has the front stairs to go down. If Karzeka drops and misses his shots, and it will put it all on the shoulders of Shepard, who now goes over towards the meeting hall. Shotgun out! Oh, Young will pick one off, but Shepard turns around. His position noted. Two kills, five seconds. He needs to get that diffuser down. He'll be incredibly vulnerable. And it'll be the Yokai drone and Nathan Valenti who will push EG to match point. Map number two. And Evil Geniuses have already taken map number one. So this is it. Empire have to win every round from here on out to get us to OT. That's three total if they want to get to map number three and then also win in OT itself. This hold inside of construction, blue and by Harry Potter, is what allowed Evil Geniuses to take that round. An absolutely beautiful counter, specifically catered and tailored to Empire's take from tower and construction. You just cannot get more directly countered than that. Beautiful job by EG. It worked this time because of one change. That was the Mute Jammer placed in the hallway where Canadian was trying to play. That Mute Jammer denied the ex the When the ex was denied, the position that both Canadian and Young were playing made so much more potent. And, well, there wasn't a whole lot Empire could do to adjust. They were unsure what to do when a construction tower take doesn't work for them. It's just so reliably worked for Empire in the past. Absolutely masterful play as well from Canadian down below to read into it and push on up as the ADS did their job, not just preventing the flashbangs from going off, but also giving away the position here. And now, the place at which Empire always entries from on their map with the championship and the trophy on the line with a hint of humor and irony, it'll be a tower take. Geo priming the windows for a possible jump out over on dorm side as two minutes and 45 seconds could separate us from a trophy celebration here in Milan. Empire bringing the Nomad, the operator they banned so frequently to help with the runouts. Clearing ADSs with the flashbangs. Right call, one ADS cleared. Still one though, in existence. Joystick, aware of this? is going to keep on clearing. Canadian playing behind a shield on T3. It's a very dangerous position to hold. Karzek is looking for a rotation on the main stairs. Canadian knows he's been droned out. He knows his position's been given away, but he's relying on the... Oh no, Young! Gets a free pick, but Shepard will shut him down. That's that an excellent refrag. Sledge, the grenades are gone as well, and Joystick taking a beating up on Repel with Canadian behind this deployable shield. You still have the explosives from Scyther as Necrox triggers one of those air jabs. His position given away, but he manages to get back in. He gets knocked over, but still can get back in, but still the sound will go down. Waiting for possible vault out here from Geo as he watches the windows, and Canadian knows he's under fire. He doesn't know what position that he's going to need to play off of. 
Canadian's taking a lot of fire here, but he's already wasted a bunch of time. He goes for the pre-fire and cannot land the shots. Joystick shuts down Canadian, and that's T3 control for Empire. So crucial on a tower defense. They're not going to repel in immediately, though. Necrox is in T2 trying to contest. All of it falls to his shoulders now, as Geo is not in a position to assist, nor is MPK. A run out, but ill-advised. Scyther shuts down Necrox, and it looks like Team Empire have control of T3. MPK trying to fight back, though, from T2, and he'll be shut down as well. It's just Geo. C4 goes out in vain, but it will find one as the attempted vault from Dan puts him just too high, and he catches that explosive. The air jab outside is going to put Geo on the floor, but he will finally be finished off by Scyther, and Team Empire keep themselves in this match. 6-4, still favor to G2, or rather EG. Oh, my. That happens to the best of us. You're so used to saying it, right? Yeah. The crowd gathering around in front of evil geniuses as they will sit on the precipice of this championship for the remainder of the game. Need overtime in order for Empire to win. Tower doesn't work, but Dorms unlocks. So EG will have a more conventional site on which they hope to win this trophy here in Milan. And that's the, that's the thing. You lose a tower defense, but so what? It's a tower defense. The strategy that EG set up was beautiful, but it just was perfectly countered by Empire. They know how to attack Tower. This right here, this kill from Joystick, was the, one of the most important, being able to take control of T3. Scyther, there was always one player from Empire holding this rotation that Scyther's on right this second. Whether it was Scyther or Shepard or Karzeka, it was always somebody, and that is such a crucial play on the side of Empire, being able to cut off that rotation. Now, moving forward, Evil Geniuses, again, as you said, top floor. Taking their tactical timeout. Yeah, they get to think through what they want to do on this last, potentially last, round. They're set up so very well to take this. You know, imagine the pressure that's on the shoulders of both of these teams at this moment. Yeah. At this point in time, EG coming the closest to a championship that they've been sitting on match point, sitting on championship point. They never sat on championship point against G2 at the Invitational. Yeah. I think, I think the pressure is enormous, that's for sure. But Evil Geniuses is the only team out of North America to ever really come this truly, truly this close. And they're the only team from North America who have ever really actually won an international event like this. So if anyone is going to do it, it would be EG. And to be honest, the way that they've been playing, you know, they've got this, this huge pedigree, this wonderful play from past events. But I said it earlier on Bank, and I'll say it again here now on Oregon. I believe this is the best Evil Geniuses we have ever seen. The level of play that they are putting out is just unlike what I'm used to seeing from them. It just, it's just above and beyond. There's a calmness from them, right? Certainly. Eventually it gets to a point where you just lose so damn much that you stop caring and you play a little bit more light. I think that's a good way of putting it. And yeah. Liquid, two teams that came in with very minimal expectations. And I mean, if you think of the hunger that's on the side of EG, these are five players who they can't really be as affable and as carefree as those other teams. They always want to win. They yeah. want to be the best. In this case, they are one round away from proving that this season they were. And they'll go to the dorm side. Just like clockwork, Empire will once again take control of Tower. And for EG, there's nobody nearby. Canadian is the closest. He's inside a meeting hall playing on that vigil. I think there's been a lot of doubt put on the shoulders of Evil Geniuses over past events. I think a lot of people have lost faith. It certainly seems that way. And what they're showing us here is just so much reason to regain that faith. Even if even if Empire brings us back, they win in the third map. Evil Geniuses are proving themselves again, anew, being one of the most, I'd say, prestigious teams in all of Pro League, one of the longest lasting. They're doing it again. An air jab going out from Joystick here on the highway window, as you'd mentioned earlier on. A lot of people call it, 
you call it? 51? 51, yeah. And, oh! Start things off as Necrox. He'll get... Karzeka gets oh! another! Oh my god! Omar looking for one more! But it's Geo to take down Dan! And Shepard and Scyther are the last two. 90 seconds in and EG going for broke here. Not Do like this. Do you believe, Michael? Not like this. What a run out from Necrox. And it seems like Empire can't recover at this point. They're at the double window, waiting and prepped and ready with Geo low on HP. He's on the hunt down below. But you've got both Young and Canadian in the position watching this big window. And Empire have time to work with. They've got a lot of rope. But you know how that metaphor goes. Mm. They're simply waiting now for the time being as there's going to be extensive amount of patience. And you've got to imagine that for EG, you want to take these fights. You want to take these engagements. You've been hitting your shots. You know it's possible. That's Scyther and Shepard. Shepard holding that diffuser, and you'll put yourself in a position where Scyther, an incredible player on this team, who's been often overshadowed by the members of both Joystick as well as Karzeka, he's going to need to try and protect Shepard. And just waiting, as now Canadian is the only member of EG who has not taken a beating now with 30 seconds left. Shepard will watch that big window, and here comes the tension. Here comes the push. Down on white stairs, waiting for the vault on in is Canadian. Will he be able to secure the kill? He sees the tracers go. Oh, no! Scyther will win the fight. He'll inch his way on up. Geo's going to be next in line, but this could be a tough shot. And Empire could wrestle away the round. There's Geo just waiting. He doesn't pull the trigger. He sees it. He pops up. Oh, no, Geo, you got to hit your shots. Young will be the last one left. He was so important for FaZe. He turns his back. He's got the pistol, but Shepard will deny the comeback from EG on that round. And the hopes and dreams will win one more round at minimum will we have overtime between these two teams eg inches away but they fumble it it's only going to take one more round for empire to push us to ot and you got to imagine if they can build up that kind of momentum they will be able to bring us to map number three we are so close yet so far for evil geniuses they have to be able to push this over you got to imagine that's all that's running through their mind right now it comes so close what a spectacular throw of a round there for EG. It's just the pressure, Michael. Geo doesn't usually miss his shots. He unloaded an entire mag and he missed them all. Didn't really do all that much. EG started out so strong, but they overcommitted just a tiny bit too much. And the nerves, it's the nerves. It's gotta be the nerves. I mean, <laughs> okay, a couple different things. Canadian missing his shots on the stairs there. We saw Geo missing his shots inside of Generator. But apart from that, early peaks lightening up the HP on the side of Evil Geniuses for both Geo and Young. They were getting too aggressive. I mean, 40 seconds left, and you got two people on West Window. In a two versus three, what are you gonna do as Evil Geniuses? Your options are A, peak them aggressively and try to take the fight on the West Window, giving away opportunities to your opponents, or B, wait for the vault. They chose option A, it did not work out. Now, Evil Geniuses will go back to the top floor, but you can imagine that run out from Necrox will not be as successful if he commits to it again. That was a power move to take a lead in terms of man count yeah. here from EG. And yeah, Empire's gonna be prepared and ready for this. Laundry and supply room is now open yet again. You could have gone there if you really wanted to, but EG are not gonna risk it. They're gonna go back to dorms. So there's obviously something that they saw that they liked about this defense that this site will work better on. Well, I think that they were pretty confident here on the top floor defense. I think they were very happy with the results. Evil Geniuses knew, no, they threw that round. I, I think it's, it's pretty clear. There's no question in their mind. So go back to it, try it again. Don't throw, get that win, deny overtime, and take your earned Season 9 Championship Trophy. When you look at the lineup from EG here, they're still gonna have tons of information. They've got the Valkyrie in play, which has become a staple for them on Oregon over this matchup. And then you've also got Young playing on the Echo. So just in case something goes awry, you don't have the alibi there, you're gonna have the gadget available to spot anybody from Empire. And yeah, you're probably not going to knock Empire on their heels with the runout that you did before. So you're gonna have to play a little bit more conventional. It'd be like the Jaws clamping down on top of you if Empire is able to push on in and continuously take map control away without you being able to counterpunch. Slow going here from Empire. Haven't made any mistakes, really. Tower control, 
well in hand. Geo in a position by meeting, and along with Canadian, where they could potentially get a flank off here. Joystick's gonna get the first skill, though. There goes NVK. That is huge. On the Jaeger, he's no longer gonna be able to frag in this round. Empire doing a lot of work with these north windows. They're baiting out these toxic canisters as well from Necrox. It looks like it might have gotten shot out as Joystick is going to continuously flit around the side of the window. He's going to be joined by Karzeka on his right. You got to imagine that NVK should have known that there would be somebody there watching. It might be a mistake that proves to be fatal in this round, and over time would likely go in favor, or bode well, rather, for the chances of Empire, who would have gained full momentum. We'll need three rounds in a row in order to push this one on in. Necrox still doing his best work to try and keep Karzeka off of these windows, and Necrox will jump out. Oh, not again! Take down one! Not oh! again! Necrox will take out two, but Scyther and Shepard will pick up kills of their own! Geo will put us onto a 2v2! Canadian falls, it'll be all in the shoulders of Geo, as Dan, very low on HP, separated from Shepard. They are miles apart, and Geo will need to be his best asset. He's still got a Nitro Cell in hand, and he'll have four teammates watching and waiting with bated breath to see if he can save it. The newest addition to this evil genius's roster was brought on and heralded as somebody who could possibly change the tide. Pressured from behind, Geo might not be aware that there's a Hibata there. We got Empire going to overtime with EG. Three rounds unanswered, and EG will choke the lead they had. And they'll need to think about that in OT. Beautiful job there from Empire, three in a row. How does it happen? And on top of what Necrox managed to pull off on those north windows. Once again, you are seeing these runouts from EG that are catching Empire off guard, but that's it. Empire are reactive and they're able to get the kills and the people on site for EG have not been doing the job needed to be able to hold it in line. That pick there from Joystick on highway. NVK no longer allowed to do what he wanted to do, but there you go. Oh, Necrox with the double again. But still, Empire putting up enough frags to get themselves just over the hill. OT. Dan, Dan in particular has been yeah. lights out so far over the second half of this map. So we're going to be seeing top floor from Evil Geniuses a third round in a row. Two times it looked like EG should have had it. A third time they will go here. Now, I gotta imagine that you go there three times thinking you should have won it the first two, and that's gonna start really wearing away at you. We should have taken that last round, man. We should have taken the round before it. Let's try one more time. When does it become bashing your head against the problem? It's back on the old reliable and Canadian has actually taken some damage, likely from an impact grenade. Yeah. Alibi has used both of hers, so it's likely from that. There's the calm before the storm here, as now we go into a position where one of these teams will find themselves on match point. Empire has not been on match point, period. Yeah, they've been on the back foot through this entire series. Empire has actually not had a lead since round number three of map one. So it has been EG very firmly in the driver's seat. And EG's greatest nemesis has not often been G2, as people say, but themselves. The ability to persevere despite the pressure that they find upon themselves and not falter when the going gets tough. Yeah, if we're being honest, this map and thus this match probably should have been over quite a few rounds ago. Yeah. Opportunities given to Empire, though, and Empire will take that. They are excellent at seizing every opportunity presented. Oh, here's interesting. There's a camera inside of Tower, and it's going to survey and do some surveillance work on the members of Empire. But there doesn't really seem to be any possible follow-up. And I'm wondering if this cam is here for a late rotate to possibly run out of Tower. We saw the air jabs get deployed, though, in those positions at a Claymore down as well on the highway window, meaning that Empire are going to double up on preventing any possible play from that specific angle. That means NBK will likely just stay inside for the time being, and EG are not going to be given the same opportunities to run out and catch Empire off guard the way that they have in the previous couple rounds. Evil Genius is doing their best to hold on to dorms. Not using the vertical play, but oh, there's Dan with a kill onto MVK, and there's elsewhere a kill onto Canadian. And now Evil Genius is on a serious back foot. That was, MV, that was MVK all the way out on the roof, He's connecting tower to armory. That is a deep run. Trying to make a rotation. And I can understand, but he got caught out from Dan, and I don't, I. Bad call. 
I think we will look back on that with great skepticism. Yes. Necrox patrolling the big window. That is also a very brazen move for him to do as Geo down below will try to get back up. You know how hard it is to hold off this site when you have lost control and retaking it can be very, very difficult. Oh no, Necrox gives himself up for free. And there's another now. Empire are just crushing EG at every opportunity. And a pre-fire on the Geo will find its target. And for the first time on this map, Empire will sit on match point. One evil geniuses began to throw. Four in a row for Team Empire. A decisive run and an evil geniuses that seems unlike what we were seeing not a few minutes prior. So the last couple rounds have gotten progressively worse for Evil Geniuses. They used their tactical timeout earlier on, and I wonder how much of that is just them losing the plot now and losing confidence. You've got to imagine, this is now four rounds in a row for Empire. We have Clubhouse up next, and you're demoralized now if you're Evil Geniuses, but imagine how demoralized you are going to Clubhouse, knowing that you had an opportunity to put this one away. You could have locked this game up 20 minutes ago. If, if Evil Geniuses do not finish this, it's going to be very difficult to come back on map number three. I just, I, ooh. Evil Geniuses are right now their own worst enemy. They're missing a lot of shots, and they're making a lot of serious errors in their positional skills. And we just weren't seeing that, map one. We weren't seeing that for the majority of this second map. EG is getting away with this right now, in large part also because Joystick has not been anywhere near as effective as he has been previously. He's bottom fragging on this team. You are winning this because their best player is not performing at the same standards that you'd expect. And credit goes to EG for shutting him down. But it's still the fact that you are playing this closely against a team that has one of the greatest players in the world at the moment in Joystick, batting way below average. It's not a given that he's gonna be able to do that for you on Clubhouse. And additionally, we saw that he just ran over Fnatic on Clubhouse. So, you find yourself in very tough position. And now EG will have to go on attack. They were very good on attack. They won four of those two rounds. All right, Empire did the exact same. Empire won their attacking round. But man, the confidence that EG had is all gone. Yeah. It certainly feels like a third map. It is looking like that way, yeah. Evil geniuses are gonna have to do something pretty crazy to change our minds on that point. Or not to change our minds, honestly, just to, to win. That's all that really matters to them right now. And they're so close yet so far, it feels. They've got great setup here, tower control. Gonna isolate that flank, open up attic likely. Once they've done that, it should be a north windows take. Something that we've seen quite a lot from both teams. Unless there's a trade here, you gotta suspect that the very first kill that comes out is gonna set the pace for the entire round and likely end up being the deciding factor here. Yeah. Joystick down below has been a threat lurking over by the dining hall, and unless there's some form of runout denial, it appears to be Necrox there in the exact same position as before, and Joystick will be able to get a runout and possibly a kill onto Young. Necrox is still just waiting patiently, and Joystick might be aware of this. It really depends on what he's doing. He's lurking down below, he's inside a kitchen. He's not gonna take the fight, at least it doesn't appear so for the time being. Six, yeah, playing kitchen, trying to play safe. Necrox could challenge it, but it looks like I, I think he just wants to deny the run out. Shepard inside of Dorm, such an important player for his team. He needs to hold on to this position for as long as possible. Two gas canisters left, and he will be able to fall back. No one on West Window from Evil Geniuses is a huge mistake, and that's going to allow Shepard maneuverability, potentially sustainability because of that. Nade goes out does not detonate where it needs to, and Shepard persists. Shepard doesn't even take a single point of damage there, as now Canadian is moving over to West Window. Another frag grenade will go out, and Shepard is under fire from two separate angles. The frag grenade will take quite a bit of damage into Shepard, and there you go, Karzeka finds Young, and Empire looking for round number five in a row. This is one of the best comebacks that we have seen, given the adversity, given the pressure, given everything that's on the line for Empire, at least for the time being and they are in the driver's seat quite firmly. The only hard destruction from EG is gone. 
And then Necrox, who had been on flank watch so long, will need to wander on in. It was his job to find Joystick. He won't be able to do it. NBK will find Dan, but Karzeka finds NBK. Karzeka finds Geo as well. And Necrox, who's been a standout in this matchup, now need to walk up. Hitting a Guma in his position given away. Empire with five in a row will turn around. And it's Empire winning on time. Oh my god, what a performance from them. And EG, battered and bruised, will limp into map number three with Empire in great position to steal this matchup away. Evil geniuses tossing it away. Empire seizing the opportunity. A beautiful comeback from Empire. All credit to them. But evil geniuses were their own worst enemy in the second half of that map. Yeah, that's a heartbreaking defeat if I've ever seen one. And we've seen some pretty remarkable comebacks in Pro League with games on the line, trophies on the line, money on the line. And this is an entire region that has been starved for recognition for years now. Europe has long dominated the Pro League scene and Empire have found the spark to come back into a position where most people would likely assume they are the favorite on Clubhouse, knowing the disposition that Evil Geniuses will have heading into this, this absolutely ultimate map now. You can't even say penultimate because that's exactly what Oregon was. And like we said, you're gonna need a reverse sweep here for Empire. EG knows that feeling. Uh, it's going to be a really tricky comeback for Evil Geniuses, that's for sure. That map, there's so many moments where EG had it, had it, and it slipped away. It's heartbreaking for anyone watching. I mean, I imagine such a great comeback, though, for Empire. Got to be really instilling a lot of confidence in map number three. It's a little bit of both here, but there's greater viewpoints to look at, and that's exactly what our analysts are for, and they'll take us through map number two. Thank you very much, Kix and Taro. And yes, it's time for us to do our jobs, gentlemen. We have to break this down. And man, this should not have happened. Kix said it on the caster desk quite a few times. This match should have been over rounds ago. What happened to EG? I mean, we've seen this time and time again, unfortunately. They get so close to winning. And yeah, I mean, you can five rounds in a row, right? That's. Um, they, they get so close to winning. And every time they're an inch away, the, the shakes hit and, and they just can't, they can't finish out. Yeah, I think that the good thing about this, you know, is we saw such a strong performance on bank from Empire, but that wasn't on the board as much. You know, we didn't hit overtime. And this time, I think that the score more accurately reflects how well not just Empire played, but both teams, because we saw some damn good things out of Evil Geniuses as well before, you know, they started to choke. Yeah, for me, the problem was the, the entire collapse of, of EG late. Yeah. We see these crazy jump outs. They get 3Ks and 2Ks, but instantly, within seconds, the scoreboard is, is full of Empire people. I really I felt like there was, particularly on those dorms defenses, I felt like there was something a little bit missing from uh, some of the Romas. We saw time and time again, every time Evil Geniuses re-attempted that dorms defense, which was three times in a row during that streak of them losing, Every time they tried to allow for more vertical play, they kept opening up more of the floor with Smoke Shotgun, but each time the Romas down below, namely Canadian, just wasn't able to have an impact on the, the jump in from those windows. And like you said, it was just a collapse and the scoreboard all went to Empire. Well, Canadian couldn't really have an impact because you still need someone to, to be upstairs. What would happen though is that once the timer really ticked down, EG for some reason just start peaking angles or finding themselves in positions where, oh yeah, we're just gonna give Karsheka a 3K. Like, it shouldn't be happening. We're giving him these opportunities. And yeah, you give these sorts of things to a team like Empire, they're not gonna hold back. They're here to win it as well, just as much as you are. And we saw it at match point, the, the ultra shakes hitting up there, right? Not a single shot hit, and I think at least, what, three max fired? It's, it's got to be devastating going into clubhouse. Aggressive plays are, are what Evil Geniuses are really good at and what they've been really, really good at throughout this entire tournament. But 
for some reason, on that last map, when the shakes hit, the decision making on uh, realizing when are those opportunities that you actually can take and when is the risk too high, that judgment was just out the window. Yeah, okay, well now, gentlemen, let's take a look at map number three. It's Clubhouse, a map both teams are excellent on. We've seen the past and the present of Canadian on the pulse, We've seen the potential roam play from it, but also the hard anchor that EG is so great at when it comes to defending, especially in church, a site they are very famous for playing excellently so over so many years. And you look at Empire that when not challenged, just doesn't give you the ability to run out anymore. We said the same thing in the previous match against Fnatic. We went to Clubhouse and Fnatic couldn't do anything. There's no runouts on Clubhouse, they're very limited. How can you even shut them down one by one and shave off those numbers of Empire before they get on their excellent execute? To be honest, it could have been EG's absolute best map. They could not have lost it up until now. If if what just happened in Oregon happens to you when you're that close to winning, they they were one round away. Yeah, going into Clubhouse for five rounds in a row. Th this has to be absolutely got got wrenching and breaking. And on top of that, you know, EG no doubt would have been watching earlier. Empire had such a good Clubhouse performance against Fnatic. Such a good performance. Everything was so textbook. I mean, how many teams can you say run the same five operators literally every single round of their attacking half and have equal success every single time? And they only have seven rounds to learn from. Yeah. There's not a, a lot to go off if you're EG. Uh, so strategically, it's not looking great. And mentally, it's looking real bad. Yeah. Yeah, it, it really is. There's no other way around it. We know EG and how sensitive they can be at times with this. We've seen it happen so many times in the past. And we don't want to wrench on it for too long, but it is very much a problem. And what we're trying to, to really get to is, have they fixed that issue? Because in Oregon, for five rounds in a row, when they had the advantage, it seems like they did not. So now they go away, they talk to Gotcha, they talk to Peter, they try to completely freshen up before going back into the game. This is a completely new one. These guys are professionals. They've had years of experience behind them. If there's anybody that can take down Empire at this point, it's EG. They're the ones that are hungriest for it. But then you look at Empire, they're coming in with so much on their shoulders as well. The crowd here actually does not care who wins. I think this is pretty clear. This one a good game. We are, yeah, we don't care. As long as we get the best game possible, that's all that matters. We went to a map three now that already gives us so much to be happy about, but then we have a winner, no matter what the storyline is still the same. A team that finally wants to come in and show everybody that actually, yeah, that we can win. We're not just some random EU team, Russian team that has been around for a long time, but couldn't really achieve anything. We're not just EG as well. We're a big name team. We're here to win it. We've been in the grand final multiple times. We need to actually just get over that tiny line, get over the edge. And it it's really is walking the Razor's edge the whole time. I mean, at least we know that EG are capable of winning against Empire. The problem is if they can close out that last damn round they need to do so. I mean, it's night and day. Evil geniuses have the better plays. When it comes to making a big impact play, Evil Geniuses are doing it a lot better than Empire. But what Empire have do are doing so well is the consistency. And especially going into Clubhouse after the performance earlier today, everything was textbook. And they have that. They have that going for them. They, are, they all know what they're doing. And the methodical approach is what's actually directly countering EG's more playmaker play style. Because every time that EG takes a risk that counts on the enemy not being prepared, Empire is prepared. All right, gentlemen, operator bans are second to last subject here. Capitao been banned twice now. Mira been banned twice. Glass only on map one and bank. Echo on map one and Maestro on the second one. Monty is taken away by EG in map two in Oregon. How is this going to change on Clubhouse or not? Capitao. I mean, shouldn't we just say Capitao yeah, by exactly. now? Right? I think at this point, both teams are kind of yeah. going for it, right? Mira is probably going away as well. Yeah, Empire also banning out Glass earlier. They, they left it in in exchange for banning Monty on Oregon, and we saw Evil Geniuses try the Glaz, and they ditched it, because yep. it wasn't working. A Monty ban might actually happen here as I, well. That's what I'm expecting. An old school dirt push with a Monty is absolutely terrifying. It could really yep. step on the uh, And Empire. Montaigne is incredibly, incredibly powerful against uh, a, a cash defense, taking Garage. You know, there's a lot of, of that you can do, and we've seen countless times in Pro League, in major events, Monty gets banned on Clubhouse. Shield play might be a potential here. Yeah. I, I gotta say though, the way that we see Echo, Maestro, Mira, kind of that 
comes about. Both of these teams have shown that when two of them are left in, when Echo and Maestro are left in, they're happy to play both, especially Empire. And I've got to say, you know, I don't think EG is so good when it comes to attacking against the Echo. Whereas on that last map, we saw a lot of last second executes with Empire, where Evil Geniuses tried to rotate their Yokai drones into position last minute, and Team Empire was so on the ball with shooting out those Yokais before they could deny the plant. A possible potential ban as well for Empire against EG. We've seen the power Canadian on that. But gentlemen, closing thoughts. We've gotten all the way to map three. We expected it. We wanted it with all our hearts. And so did everybody here and everybody sitting at home. I just hope uh, e EG can get their mentality fixed going into this game because it's going to be an uphill battle. If Team Empire win, I don't want it to be because Evil Genius has played bad. And that is what happened at the end of Oregon. So I think that it's still on the cards for either of these teams. I think Team Empire could win and Evil Genius as well. They've shown us that they have the potential and I'm looking forward to them delivering that on Clubhouse. All right, closing thoughts. Thank you very much, gentlemen. So it's time for map number three, Clubhouse, Team Empire versus EG. Again, Russia versus USA. Cold War heats up, version 3.0. Oh, Electric Boogaloo, let's go. Intero, kicks, please finish this. Well, it did look for most of map two that there wouldn't end up being a third map. But five rounds in a row for Empire prove that you cannot sleep on this Russian squad and give them even an inch because they will take a mile. That's exactly what happened. So we'll go to Clubhouse. You saw the dismantling that Team Empire gave to Fnatic on this map earlier today. Will Evil Geniuses be their second victim? We'll find out when we eventually get to Clubhouse. It's gonna have some time to load in here, get everything ready. So, the thing that's gotta be going through the minds of Evil Geniuses is, wow, boy, we tossed away that map. Oh boy, but it happens, it does. And I think if there's any team that's capable of shaking it at this point, it's Evil Geniuses. I mean, come on, they've been here before. They've been in this position. It's got to be something easier capable of doing mentally. Just push through. Take map number three, but it's Clubhouse. This is a map we've seen Empire thrive on. And following their triumphant victory on map number two, they have got to be in the best possible place. How far inside of their own heads are EG right now? I mean, if they if they come out losing round after round on this second map, you can you can safely say pretty darn far. Yeah. But I, I again I have confidence in EG to shake that. I mean, if, if they can't do it now, can they ever do it? I mean, we always cheer for a good matchup. We've got one so far. But I agree with them. I don't want the victor to go to the fact that a team imploded. You never want to see that. You want it to be a hard-earned victory. It is unfortunate. And it doesn't matter whether it's Empire or EG here. I want it to go towards the latter half of this matchup. I don't want to see a 7-1, a 7-0, a 7-2. It doesn't matter who it is. Yeah, I no, I totally agree. It would be unfortunate to see. But sometimes it happens. We saw the same thing in the uh, Fnatic matchup earlier, Empire. That last map, just oof, brutal. So, very similar to the way that Fnatic played against Empire. On border, they played aggressively. They played unpredictably. They played in a manner that was almost like controlled chaos. And EG played that exact same style on Oregon. You can't do that on Clubhouse. Yeah, it is, it is something that is just not possible. Clubhouse as a map is very rigid and it plays into the Empire playstyle by default, which is dangerous for evil geniuses. Yeah. So we're waiting to load on in here to Clubhouse. As this is actually going to be quite a, a benefit for the teams as they have time to talk. This actually benefits EG quite a bit. Yeah, I think, I think it gives them time to recuperate. The longer they have to recover and the longer they have to talk could possibly be a benefit, but at the same time, they might just want to get into the game and muscle through this. EG will be starting on defense, on Clubhouse, the preferred side for most teams. We'll start the operator ban phase, and who will it be? Jackal. 
not surprised at all. Jackal has been such a powerful operator for Team Empire, but you know what that means? It means Capital is left unbanned this time around. Glass taken out there. Not surprised by that either. Empire have struggled with Glass on the side of EG in the past. This will be a Mira ban. Oh we'll yeah. Next. They've always banned Mira. There you go. So it's going to be Echo or Maestro in all likelihood as the final ban from Evil Geniuses. Is that's what they've been banning so far? Could see something completely different. Who knows? No, there you go. It's the Echo. He's gone. Pretty standard ban phase for this map. EG bans Echo because they probably weren't going to play him anyway because with Jackal being banned, it's very likely that you're going to see Joystick on IQ. No. That's probably going to happen. So if you put him on IQ instead of Scyther, then it's very likely that these yokais are going to get taken care of. And because of this, well, you, you know. Oh. Well, you don't really need it. But is that Joystick on Ash? It does appear to be Joystick on Ash. Maybe they're going to six pick him off? I mean, the Hibana, Zofia, Thermite, and Thatcher are all very standard for this squad. It's the opportunity here. They could six pick off into a Capital. I mean, Capital, Nomad, oh. uh, IQ, lots of options for utility-based picks here. Zero six-pick, actually. Mike. But yeah, no six-pick from either team. So let's get, let's get things underway here. Our final map, no matter what happens, at most 15 rounds left here in Milan to crown a champion. EG would be repeat champions. They won once before under a moniker known as Continuum. Nope. Team Empire looking for their very first trophy. Evil Genius is going to start things off in the basement. Pretty safe pick. One interesting fact is that they are fully reinforcing Blue Wall into Church. They are aware that it is something Empire like to pressure a lot. Blue. They take control of Blue. They have a crossfire into Church, and then it's a Moto take with a Church wall open as well, usually. There is a Thermite here and a Thatcher, so that's a big play that could be made by Empire and a strat that they love to run. So Evil Geniuses trying out of the gate to counter their opponents by placing hard destruction somewhere where there won't be a hard destructor. Now... Oh, there you go. Hmm. He doesn't have the ACOG on the R4C, but he has it on the G36. I don't think a lot of people would wonder what Joystick would run on Ash, given the option oh, but with, between an acog list R4C and a G36C with an ACOG. And it seems like he's made his choice here. You could take the ACOG out of the Ash, but you can't take the Ash out of Joystick. That's true. And it seems like uh, seems like he's also, he's played, I believe, with the R4C without an ACOG. He's, he's pretty versatile. He could do either or. It's still curious to me that they're going to bring an Ash, though, over so many of the other options. Is that a regression? I don't think so. Maybe just Joystick in his purest form. I think the first couple rounds here will really give us a shining example of where EG is mentally, and that's something that you have to watch out for, because as much as I had said that EG was playing cool under pressure, I was immediately force-fed my own words. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was a pretty, pretty impressive comeback from Empire at the same time. Yes, okay, EG definitely threw a number of rounds there, but... Empire did great to seize that opportunity. They did absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I don't think you can really argue otherwise. Now, because there's no Sledge or Buck that's being brought out from Empire, their soft destruction is gonna come almost exclusively in the hands of the Zofia, Ooh. as Joystick is all on his own, and he's gonna find Young, but those trauma plates will absorb quite a bit of damage, and Young, or rather, I guess disperse quite a bit of that energy from those bullets. Yeah. Young will find himself about 25 HP below 100. But he'll get away. Joystick also eats a goo mine for his trumble, and it'll be a moto drop from Empire as well. There goes a Zofia concussion mine, and we might see some active bandit tricking here as the exothermic charge on the church wall will go down, and instead it looks to be possibly impact tricked. Shepard trying his best, but he's only got one exothermic charge left, and oh, this active bandit tricking. He's forcing Shepard to continue to move. Joystick will take down MVK, though. Finally, gets a pick from inside of Blue. But he's still got those reinforced walls to contest with. And Shepard hasn't been able to open up Church. Canadian doing a heck of a job to deny this. There are no EMPs left. And there you go! Canadian, what a beautiful bandit trick. Karzeka, though, is going to get one. And Joystick, his second. It's just Canadian. Oh, Empire! A beautiful round and a perfect one to boot. They take it quite confidently. 
They realize that if we can't get through the wall, well, we've got Joystick distracting them inside of blue. So let's just decide to funnel on in and kill them all. And easy enough. Great individual effort and really good play from Canadian. But that only goes so far. And while all of your teammates are dying around you, whether you bandit trick the wall or whether it's opened up by an exothermic charge, your number's up next and you're on deck. And that's exactly what happened. Joystick inside of blue was a particular menace. And then Karzeka also looking for the possible impact trick. Look at this shot onto Young. I don't think the Rook was quite expecting that. And then also two beautiful shots from Joystick. Really open things up for Empire. Oh no. Parker, I'm seeing deja vu right now. EG going to the basement again. So what happened? What really caused that, uh, well, that tremendous, unfortunate event, is what I'm gonna call it, for, uh, for Evil Geniuses on the last map? They went to the top floor three times in a row, lost it three times in a row despite having the edge three times in a row. So I really, really hope for Evil Geniuses' sake that they know what they're doing. They know what they're getting themselves into by going to the basement again. And that it wasn't just Empire having a really good attack strategy and EG not being set up right. Really a remarkable start here. And Empire need to keep up this torrid pace that they established at the end of Oregon. This now marks six rounds in a row for Empire without EG being able to stem, uh, or stop the bleeding rather stem the losses that are coming from Empire, or coming from them on Empire's hands. I apologize. EG once again downstairs on Church are still in the midst of setting up, so it's a bit of a belated setup here. Nobody really claiming any map control whatsoever. If you look over on EG's side, you've got six impact grenades, none of which have been used. So your full strategy is gonna be absolute breach denial. Empire did an exemplary job on Fnatic, and for that first round, the same on Evil Geniuses when it came to killing the people who were doing said breach denial. Yeah. I think uh, Evil Geniuses bringing in excess. Probably the right call here. Just to know that they can deny that kitchen drop down for as long as they need to. As well as the church wall. Yeah. Joystick trying his best to apply some pressure to Blue. He did a great job last time he was here. Yeah, I mean, look, there's also no Bandit, no Kaid, no Mute on the board, so you're yeah. basically gonna have to try and take out the gadgets that are gonna be put down from both well, the Thermite as well as the Havana. It's the impacts, 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 as we right. talked about. Absolutely. And it's gonna be tough to do that inside a kitchen when you've got these breaching charges tearing away at all of the floor. Dan and Canadian will be the first to find themselves staring each other down. This long-range engagement will favor Dan on the Zofia down at the bottom of the main stairs, and he has used one of his impacts now. He's under fire and looking to see if somebody from EG is going to aggress on towards Modo, but nobody will. Will be Shepard throwing out a drone, and EG have both Necrox and Canadian inside of Modo. The drone looks to survive, at least for the time being, and it will sit there as Shepard will drop and now attempt to get the wall. This is where the impact grenades will prove to be successful or not. Shepard waiting and watching. He'll place an exothermic charge on the middle, and the concussives will go on in, and the MP will go off, and the impact will not get the wall. Joystick starting things off by taking NVK, so two very important strokes there for Empire, claiming not just some reinforcements, but additionally, one of the bodies from EG. It's a really excellent pick there early on. I say early on. We're in the last 30 seconds here for Team Empire. They've had a slow take here, but they're already racking up more bodies. They're punishing their opponent, and they're taking full control. Armory is lost. Everything's lost. Necrox in the main hallway. He will get one. He will not get two. And Empire will take yet another attack onto the basement. I was surprised that Clubhouse was let through the ban phase, but... As was I. I mean... Surely there was something that EG thought they might have been better equipped to go here than any other map that they could have found themselves on. I mean, it was EG that banned Coastline, if I recall correctly, instead of Clubhouse. And I mean, with the way that EG's been playing on Coastline, there's plenty of odds for them, uh, for oh. anybody to watch. Wow. A beautiful shot. And then there's another. Joystick's been in the same position now two rounds. And okay. nobody, nobody seems to be any the wiser. Okay, you know what, at this point, it, is, it, is, it has to be getting to Evil Geniuses. Oh, no question. And they're going to just, thank God, 
They go to gym. <laughs> They're not going basement anymore. The site that most teams don't want to go on to. Yep. The thing with EG is that they are an emotional team. We say this time and time again. A big round victory, one or two, is enough to put them back on even footing. Yeah. When certainly. do they get it? That's the question. Well, maybe it's going to be here. The new site. This could be the opportunity they've been waiting for. The crowd is certainly cheering for Empire at this point. Evil Genius is setting up a hold on the cash side, as you can see. Lots of utility being invested. Castle barricades, fusion mines, ADSs, a whole lot going into holding on to cash. And that is going to allow for a crossfire, a very long angle crossfire, deep into the site, all the way from the other side, the east side of the building. Interestingly enough, a lot of teams don't go to gym willingly. Some, some do. You know, it's, it's, it's preference. I think there's a lot of teams that comfortably defend this site. Evil Geniuses might be one of them. I mean, with the confidence that they went to this instead of cash, it screams a lot. I mean, they saw how routine all of the pushes from Empire were onto cash and CCTV when Fnatic was holding it. True. And True. the precision that Empire had to flush out any garage plays that might be there from the defense, tearing away at that wall that would be inside of CCTV that does connect the garage. And Capitao is on the board, which makes holding garage even more difficult. So, for the time being, though, Empire have not ran with the Capital. So this might prove to be a pretty decent ban for EG on the Jackal. Empire makes that look so easy. Opening up the Jacuzzi wall. There was no one contesting it, but still, beautiful job on the coordination. If it were necessary, it certainly would have worked. And in, as it stands, it wasn't. It also did work. Nacrox trying his best to hold Joystick at bay. The Flash is coming out. The ADS not there. There needs to be support, and there is! NVK! A very important frag onto Joystick. Shepard has been downed as well. Outside on Jacuzzi Balcony. He could be finished off. He's very exposed. And there it is! Young puts another kill onto the board. And evil geniuses find themselves up two men in this very tense third round. They get the calls and then they just immediately get the hell out of there. And there's another one to add to it, to the trophy that EG is establishing inside of this round. There'll be Dan that goes down. Young playing and waiting alongside Geometrics. And again, EG's teamwork so far has been incredible in this round. And it's exactly what they needed to get themselves and their head back in the game. There'll be Karzeka wandering just outside of the two sites, waiting and watching that window. He sees a panel get punched out as the castle of NVK will drop immediately. 50 seconds left. And if you play too aggressively, you can find Karzeka able to dive on one or two of your players and put you in a position where it can get tough to come back from. And Karzeka makes that look easy on NVK, as you had said earlier, for Empire getting the wall open. Spotted on the cameras. So they know that his position happens to be down in the bar, look towards the billiard table, and now We'll head towards the main stairs, but on the main stairs happen to be some barbed wire that will give his position away. He also doesn't hold that diffuser as it's being camped for the time being by EG. Still have some stun grenades in Karzeka's hand, so he does have some opportunity to thwart any defender nearby, but he's running out of time here. And 10 seconds left, it's very unlikely that EG's going to allow him up. He's got a goo mine, he'll have to stop for just a moment, and this round is effectively over. Nobody from EG even needs to push, and EG won't even get the kill. They're practicing the best patience they can. And they'll take a round that they need in the very first round that will break this streak that Empire had established since the end of Oregon. Beautiful win there from EG. Like you say, the patience really shining through for the Russians, or rather, for the Americans. Beautiful job, like I said. This round that I think could have been Empire's, they were split up pretty pretty heavily. One thing that stood out is their inability to clear out cash and cash stairs, as well as server. They stumbled on that clear. There was not enough manpower invested. A little bit distracted by the jacuzzi wall. We've seen from Empire in the past, the reason this is interesting is we've seen from Empire in the past that they will open up jacuzzi wall late after clearing out cash. This time, Empire got a step ahead of themselves and opened things up for evil geniuses to simply take the round off of frags. A little refrag power there on the side of Team Empire. 
Cash is the right call here for this team. At least they'll see what Empire is capable of doing. They got a first-hand experience with it, or well, rather, second-hand experience with it, watching that Fnatic matchup earlier. Yeah. And the basement just has not been working out for Evil Geniuses. And the way that EG is running this, bringing the castle, this is going to be different. And there's some unique North American strats involving castle holding downstairs inside of lounge with a deployable shield and contesting it, forcing the attackers to waste time and resources, pushing into lounge, holding off a push into garage as well because the person on defense inside of lounge can stop any attacker from going up those stairs towards the rafters. Right now, for the time being, it's Geo who's going to be playing off-site. Not over by Lounge, he's over by the Strip Club instead. And where the Valkyrie will go, nobody really knows. Doing his best to stay elusive. MVK playing underneath the site, trying to keep that Lounge presence available for Evil Geniuses so they can possibly deny from below. Decent setup here from EG, just pretty standard stuff. Canadian inside of Garage on the Raptors has a castle barricade on his window, which is going to allow him a little bit of freedom of movement. He can decide which engagement he wants to take because of that castle barricade. Once the wall gets opened up, and yes, it is open by Empire, Canadian will be more exposed, but again, the castle barricade really working for him. Finally, it's broken. Joystick by Jim. Will be clearing out on the other side of the building. They're just trying to get workshop control. The right call here from Empire. Young, the one who will have to contest this. Key to this push from Team Empire is going to be opening up that wall that divides CCTV into Garage, where you would seen from Fnatic, Ace has played quite a bit. Canadian was up on the rafter, so he would have been the intended target for Empire. He has since dropped down. But no, there he goes, back up there, and Dan will catch him. Not exactly sure what Canadian was thinking, not necessarily assuming that the Zofia would be up as long as she was. And Dan just holding that angle is an absolute nuisance. There's another body too! Necrox getting called on in, and Dan drops NVK! Oh my gosh! Young and Geo will battle back though, and there's a pistol oh. from Young! He downs Scyther, and there's another mark going on in! So Empire's position is well known. This could be Evil Geniuses with an opportunity to turn the tide here, and this would be a significant victory. But through the wall, Shepard will get shot as he's immobile for the time being. Joystick cannot come to the rescue, at least for the time being. I think there's some hesitation here on his part. They'll find Young, and it will be once again a familiar name that we've been saying all day. It'll be up to Geo. The Joystick is holding a separate angle, and he'll have to look to the right. There's Geo, but Joystick is the better player in that particular instance. He'll shut it down, and Empire will stretch out their lead three to one. Empire find themselves in such a strong position. And they look so much more alive than they had on Oregon. Evil Genius is on the other hand. Nowhere to be seen. Cash room next. It'll be second attempt. It was a very nice effort put in by EG, but it just wasn't enough. The main detriment there for Evil Geniuses on that last round was Garage relied way too heavily on the castle barricade that was placed and then destroyed by the Zofia. Once that was gone, the player inside of Garage picked off. And then a second pick because MVK, MVK decided to walk up the Garage stairs into the same exact angle. Evil Genius is just giving away those frags. It can't be happening for nothing. There was a refrag, of course, but it was, it was too late two bodies on the floor. And I mean, the thing is, is that NVK wasn't expecting to take that engagement. He was yeah. running. He wasn't looking to try and fight. And I don't know if the location of the Zofia had been called out correctly. He wanted a safe haven. I mean, and that's commendable. And I think the right call to try and get towards that reinforced wall that divides the garage from the B-bomb site, but it was all for naught. Yeah. Well, evil geniuses, dire straits. Team Empire looking so incredibly sharp. It really is beautiful to see this kind of come back. I think we realize as well at this point that the, ca that the castle wasn't working, so EG will sub off and swap up a couple things on this roll. We'll see exactly how NVK intends to use this Ella that's on the team, as she typically thrives in close quarters engagement. She's got the Scorpion, so it won't be running the shotgun, so you can take a bit longer engagements, but still, it's not the same weapon that it used to be at one point in time. 
The breach denial on the wall into CCTV will be gone very quickly, and the exothermic charge will do exactly what it's intended to do. So push EG back. The double hard breach is very common here on Clubhouse. It's not really a surprise to see, and Karzeka didn't even really need to use the XK Rose at all. Onto the wall, leading into the garage. The server wall that was on the interior rather than the exterior. You know, EG does not need to contest the server wall, but it is useful. One playing inside a bathroom, he's gone undetected. This could be a f bunch of free kills here for whoever that is. It's Geo, pops up from behind and gets, no, he doesn't! Shut down by Karzeka, and Joystick gets Canadian to boot. The Roamers completely done away with. Evil geniuses again find themselves in a nearly unwinnable situation. Three to five. What a performance from Karzeka that was. A beautiful shot and one you don't see people hit all of the time. But when you have a team like Empire, that's what you come to expect. Joystick picking away at Necrox. It'll be Scyther there. Shepard as well. And it's falling apart at the seams for evil geniuses. Young, who was the clutch master last time, will find one. But his position given away and he'll be isolated on top of Red trying to get back into the site. It's likely an effort in futility. As Shepard goes for the plant, there's Joystick holding the angle, and Empire find themselves doing the same thing to EG. The Fnatic had to struggle through earlier on. Four to one for Empire on attack, on Clubhouse. So, last defensive round. Evil geniuses. Having so little success on the defensive side. On a map like Clubhouse, like you said, is honestly a little bit shocking. Empire have been playing out of their minds, though. Absolutely done. Here we go. Basement defense, last defense again for EG. They're going to do everything they can. <laughs> to end this half 4-2, but even then, it will be difficult to recover. A lot of head shaking going on here. Yeah, there's the looks and expressions on them. All that magic seemed to have dried up on Oregon for that team. And really, we are witnessing one of the most miraculous shows of dominance that a team has had at this level in ages. Absolute ages. It's it's getting into the heads of EG, that's for sure. I mean, it's gotten into the head. It, it got into their heads at the end of the last map. Yeah. They lost five in a row. If my time is correct, in the last 35 minutes, EG has won one round. That's wow. it. And if you look at it from round 10 onwards of Oregon, all the way through to round 14 and now here, you know, you're looking at almost a dozen rounds that have been won for a while, you know, and it's, they will need to continue on that pace. I mean, Empire, Empire, Empire were no worse on defense as well for the, you know, what we saw from Fnatic too, but they I didn't mean, have much only, of a stretch yeah, there. We only saw one round. Yeah, so I don't know if that counts, <laughs> but I agree. It's going to be difficult for EG. I mean, no matter how you look at it, if EG does not end this in a 4-2, then wow, is it going to be hard for them to come back. If EG ends this in a 4-2, then Wow, is it going to be hard for them to come back. Nine of the last 10 rounds going in favor of Empire, and EG did muster up that defense on Jim. They'll go back there, uh, you know, and what? lose a body immediately. Geo coming down, not understanding that Dan was inside a garage, and he will bid farewell to one of the members of EG who would likely be relied upon later in this round itself. It's a church defense downstairs, and... Situational awareness go. has left the building. As has NVK. Canadian now in a position where he might be able to get in an engagement with Karzeka, but no, there's going to be nothing there. Karzeka will fall off. For EG fans, this must be tough to watch, but for Empire fans, and for people who are neutral observers as we are, this is a master class in utter domination. Empire are just playing insanely well. They're being gifted a lot of free opportunities to get picks, but they are not hiccuping at any point in that process. They completely seize upon the opportunity, leaving no room for evil geniuses to breathe. It's incredible to watch. With joystick very, very tentatively walking down the blue stairs.
Hitting the goo mine, his position will be given away. And instead of engaging, he'll try to find some more information. Canadian trying to get back to site for shelter will not do so. And Dan will once again be able to win an engagement. And Joystick going for broke, but he won't get anywhere. He'll be swiftly dealt with by Young. Bit of a haphazard entry there from Joystick. But when you're up in this position, you can take some chances, I suppose. And will leave Scyther at the door of Moto, looking to push on in. There's one body inside of blue as well. Scyther will breathe in some of the toxic canisters, but that'll be it. You can decide to enter through the Moto doorway as Shepard finds Necrox. And there's Young, last alive inside of blue. Most of the bullets from Scyther will not find their target, but he'll be marked from drones over and over again. And put him out of their misery, Empire. Why don't you? 5 1. Oh my goodness. You know, there are so many maps. Oh, wait. There are so many maps that Empire excel at. It's a long list. And until today, I don't know if you would necessarily put Clubhouse on there. Um, maybe. But after today, 100%. Without a shred of a doubt. It's not over yet. Yeah. There's still potential for, Amp or for Evil Geniuses to bring this back. But at what point does the list of maps that Empire are, are just unbeatably good at exceed the list of maps that exist within Pro League? When are they going to start practicing? <laughs> when are they going to start practicing maps that aren't even in Pro League? Because I, I, it seems like we're heading that direction. I mean, Empire does not play Villa. EG does. Fair. Empire's perma ban is Villa. Yeah. No. They'll ban it first no matter what. If somehow it gets through the ban phase, well, then that's where things get tough. But it I think it's I think it's when you get to best of fives because Empire can only ban Villa in a best of five. True. Which they will. No. It will it will push their maps that they are proficient at to the forefront. Empire will pick Oregon. Consulate, Coastline, Coastline, and now Clubhouse. Clubhouse, yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. There's such a pool of maps that Empire just seem indomitable upon that I, I, I don't know. I just, you know, it's 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 difficult to really see. But yes, you're right. Best of fives would be a great opportunity. This is not a major, though. So these finals are not a best of five. This is the best of three. And Evil Genius is, well, they have to do it here or it's over. Empire take the win. And Empire certainly seem right now in the straight for the win. Now, don't write off EG just yet. It was on coastline when G2 sat on match point and EG was able to make that triumphant comeback, force sure. overtime against them and ultimately fall short. But still, there is room left on this runway for an EG victory to land should it want to. But that runway gets shorter every single round. And every single opportunity that Empire has, every single kill, it just continuously pushes EG farther and farther back. Evil Genius is one of the oldest teams in Rainbow Six Pro League. They've been around since nearly the very beginning. Empire, in contrast, so very new, but doing so very well. Joystick challenging the breach, and he gets away with it. He doesn't get anything out of it, but he gets away without being punished on a brazen peak through a breached hole and garage panel. And he's looking for a frag. He might actually find it. The way that Joystick's aim is right now, it just seems like he's on point. And then some. He knows that NBK is playing a lot farther back, and he will lose that fight in terms of optics. But whether he's able to push on out is the real question. There's Karzeka above him, who will just watch and make sure that nobody pushes Joystick from the left through the other garage door. And no, oh, Young gets dropped. He wanders just in front of the garage, but Geo will trade it off a little bit later. Necrox falls to Dan, and Empire right now are just fighting trade for trade for trade. Very reminiscent of a team that is absent in Milan in G2 with the way that they play. Five seconds, four seconds, three seconds within one another. That's a beautiful opportunity here as Karzeka goes hunting and will take a chunk away of NBK's HP. And it's a joint effort as Scyther will find the rest of it. Team Empire now in such a great position, and they only need to hold on for 40 seconds. And there goes Geo. It's all on Canadian now. And the one versus four, and it's just not gonna happen. Empire match point on map three of this final. An absolute tear of rounds. Evil geniuses 
have just not been present. EG sitting now on the precipice of defeat, on the brink of being eliminated here. They sat for so long on match point, and now they find themselves seated on the opposite side. They will take an opportunity for a tactical timeout. There's been nothing that has seemed to slow down and nothing that seems to cause this Russian machine to break, as people say quite often. This is the right moment for Evil Geniuses to take a tactical pause. If the Cold War had ended this way, we'd all be speaking Russian in North America right now. It's true. Evil Geniuses need to change something. The mindset is the greatest issue. You can see the shakes in the gameplay from EG on Oregon, and it carried on. And a mess of camera crews, doting fans, journalists, people with just simply cell phone cameras. Once amassed over on the side of Evil Geniuses, the right side of the stage, are now moving over to the left. And they have circled the bench that Team Empire sits behind, awaiting your possible victors, the first to lift the new trophy that sits in the center of the stage here in Milan. It was once so crowded over here, but this is looking desperate for evil geniuses. I think desperation was at the end of Oregon. Yeah. Obliteration seems to be where we're sitting at right now. Yeah. Since sitting on match point, EG has won just the single round. That was it. It's, it's, I, I'm trying to find the words. And astonishing. Astonishing, disappointing for sure, but also I am thoroughly impressed by Empire. Not a lot of teams have the wherewithal to persevere like that, to just push past such an extreme disadvantage they had in Oregon, and then turn it into not only a comeback on that map, but an absolute stomp on the following. Evil Geniuses could still bring it back, but I, sh I just can't help but shake my head. It seemed inconceivable that we would need a third map at all, and now it seems inconceivable that the team that almost closed things out on the second map now finds themselves lost. Not treading water, close to drowning. It has really been a sight to behold. Evil Genius is playing very cautiously, as they have been for the majority of this map not working heavily against them. No. That kind of caution, I can understand why they would do it, but at the same time, that kind of caution catches you off guard. EG have not been able to muster much on the offensive side of things. Canadian is still searching for his very first kill. NVK only has one. That tells a story about EG, about their capabilities and about their state of mind, especially with Young holding the most kills on the team in a position where he isn't often the person doing that. Young is the rock. Young is the player that always performs. Young will always be there no matter what. But NVK and Canadian are the fraggers. They're the ones who need to be putting up those kills. And they're also, at the same time, the ones that seem the most psyched out if we're just judging based on their scoreboard. A very safe and secure spot at the side of Arsenal Room will be where the pulse plays, often referred to as pulse spot. You can do some work on that cardiac sensor, but because there's an evil eye camera situated all the way at the end of the Arsenal hallway, you can watch those double doors without having the pulse do so. So allows Karzeka to play aggressively underneath the kitchen hatch if he wants. Next, Kairos will go down on said kitchen hatch, and Gio will immediately get out of there as quickly as he can, but it did appear that Dan was in a position to impact trick. He will get it. The hatch will open freely inside of kitchen. Good job there. Gio getting that hatch open. Joystick playing aggressive inside of blue, and that's actually going to save his life because he was nearly exposed to an opponent there on a long angle from Moto. MVK will miss his shots, but Canadian won't. There goes Scyther. Okay, all right. Evil Genius is present and accounted for, but they only have 40 seconds to make this happen. There goes the flank of Joystick. Absolutely huge from Necrox. Canadian finding his very first kill, and you'll see some entry denial onto that church wall. Still, even with an advantage, Evil Geniuses will need to filter on in. 
and might find themselves in the line of fire of Empire, who will just sit and wait for the time being and try to burn down this clock as best as possible. E.g. lording over top of their opponents. But you still have Empire just waiting. Karzek inside of blue has a drop on anybody who decides to push in through Moto. Frag Grenade will sail on in. It will miss its intended target. And Karzeka will not be able to win the fight. The guns from E.g. will come alive. Shepard takes one down, immediately traded off. And there you go. E.g. needed this. E.g. was ready for that round, but what more will happen? Tie a couple more of those together, grab the momentum and continue to build off of it. You took your tactical timeout and you grab your second round, but there needs to be more and more and more. Four rounds in a row is what it will take for evil geniuses to get to OT. We've seen some pretty incredible comebacks, but even Empire didn't need four in a row. He only needed three. This is even more difficult than what Empire managed in the last map. If it were to happen, it would be absolutely incredible and unheard of. Evil Geniuses, great round win there. You can see on their faces, though, a sigh of relief. But for how long will that last? We'll be going to basement here again for Empire. EG just needs to get out of their own head, that's it. That's exactly right. That's they, are, they are living in their own head, Red and Free. Yeah, and they've been there for quite a long time now. Uh, and it's, you know, I, 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 it might be too late, even if they do make it out of their own heads at this point. It's been almost an hour since EG sat on championship point, and that is something that will obviously weigh on them moving forward, whether they win or whether they lose, whether they survive this dance with the devil that they tend to find themselves in against their opponents. It's definitely possible. It's still in the cards for EG. We can bring a very similar lineup here for both of these teams now as well. But the Pulse has been subbed out for Team Empire, and Karzeka instead will go with the Electric Claw. I don't know how much of that just simply goes on what Empire sees as a deficiency in their ability to stop the Xkeros of Geo, or whether or not they're worried about the Breach Charge taking out that church wall. But there were a lot of things that went wrong for Empire in that particular round, and a lot of things that EG was able to capitalize upon because of it. I think that Empire are comfortable with the information that they have at the hand with the Evil Eyes, as well as just, you know, it's Clubhouse. It's a pretty predictable map. You can understand where the take is coming from. I think they're comfortable with that, and thus they're going to go ahead and lean heavier on the denial part of things. But I, I, that might be the right call if you're Empire. They can also juggle the Moto drop down, as you can see, Karzeka is doing that right now. Two EMPs will take care of that, though, because you'll likely yank the Electric Claw down and then immediately yeah. throw it up once the EMP's down, but there could be yet another tossed in. That's a lofty that'll, price. And that'll be on NVK to do that. That will often leave you with just one of those EMPs left on the church wall. Yeah. And, I mean, if, if you look at Team Empire, Karzeka might have one on the church wall, but keep in mind there's three panels. And Electric Claw will only take care of two of them. Like I said, expensive, but might be worth it be a prioritization for Team Empire looking to close this one out. EG's push will start very similar to what we see from most teams attacking Church. They will take complete control of that main floor. They will push down through the central stairs and, well, they need to get something going onto the church wall. But here's something a little bit different. Geo is actually taking out a portion of the dirt tunnel with his ex Kairos. You don't see that every single day, and it was just one burst that was expended. A second from Geo will now go onto the kitchen hatch and it will be successful in its intended target getting that kitchen hatch to open on up. Stock is also open, and there's a fire arrow that could go down and force Joystick to move right into the waiting arms of somebody from EG. So it's going to be a full split here from Evil Geniuses. A blue take, a dirt tunnel take, and a moto take. The nade from Canadian does land onto Joystick. The evil eye is destroyed thanks to the EMP. Things are going well for EG. It's a big opportunity for Canadian as well, who's now seemingly found his mojo. That's two kills on the previous two rounds when he hit zero before. He's gonna wait for the cavalry to arrive as NBK will just slowly saunter on down the main hallway. Still waiting on the blue push is Karzeka. Dan gets down by Canadian, finished off, but Canadian gunned down by Karzeka as he pivots very quickly. And looking for another is Karzeka. He'll light up Necrox in a 3v3. Empire have tons of marks as well. Looking for the head, but Scyther knows that he can't shoot through that. He'll lose the fight to NBK. As Nathan Valenti will just hold that long angle and a diffuser will go down with EG seemingly found the magic that they lost on Oregon and the momentum that they needed to keep themselves in this one. 
Shepard looking to possibly get out of church and head towards where the diffuser may lay, but Empire appear to be blind for the time being and not sure of where to go next. Karzeka sights lie on Dirt Tunnel. It's called an escape tunnel, and well, EG might escape from this round with the victory, but none of them are in the location that Empire think they might be. Only a third of this diffuser left, and this patience from Empire is proving to be their undoing. Shepard will get one down, anticipating another. He'll toss out a smoke and go for the disable. If nobody from EG can solve this, then it'll be very easy for Empire to hold on, but no, EG will put their second on the board in the last two rounds. And this is the momentum that they need to continue to carry forward and knock Empire off, knowing that now the pressure lies on the shoulder of the Russians. Evil geniuses showing signs of life. Team Empire has to adjust their site selection. The basement is just not working out. It's come close two different times with two different variants, but evil geniuses have managed to pick it apart both. I love the strategy there from Evil Geniuses. In that last round, they applied pressure to Blue, Moto, and Dirt Tunnel. That Dirt Tunnel pressure from Geo was the most important thing, and Canadian's presence as the Sledge, using the nade to get the first kill on the joystick, follow that up with finishing off the player at shelf inside of Arsenal, absolutely massive. That allowed Geo to push into the dirt. It allowed the drop from the kitchen drop, allowing for the diffuser plant. Everything went right for Evil Geniuses. And NVK also playing at the bottom of main stairs. Just such a great job. He cut off the rotation between sites. So many things going right for EG. And again, that's the sort of strategy, that's the sort of level that EG was showing us all through Oregon, all through Bank. Empire Souls a tactical timeout as well if they think that their chances of winning have become imperiled by their mindset or by the strategies that EG has in front of them. And if I remember, at least if my notes are correct here, a team has immediately won the next round after their tactical timeout. So because of this, if they take a tactical timeout and they win one round, that's really all they need. Keep in mind that they can also use it for overtime. Evil Geniuses used theirs previously, and then they won the two rounds since. How long is that going to continue for? Well, it's a different site for Empire, so EG with Canadian on the Montane will lead the way over towards the cache and CCTV wall. There's lots of breach denial there from Team Empire, both in the hands of the Bandit as well as in the hands of the Kaid. There's a lot of slugging power on Empire, and Joystick will be on all reliable in that Jaeger. Young and MVK looking to deal with this server wall. Dan, active bandit tricky. It's a dangerous thing to do, but it could work out pretty well. Canadian on the Montane could be the saving grace for evil geniuses. He is such a powerful Montane player as of late. We've seen this from him many times in the past of the tournament. He can't expose his side to take out Joystick either because Karzeka is looming large above on top of the rafters, as you'd expect an ACOG to be playing, likely equipped with an ADS or two. So trying to deal with him might be difficult, but there's a tool on Evil Genius' side, and it's an asphyxiating bolt that could be in Necrox's hand. Somehow EG has managed to force the bandit of Dan off of that wall, who's now sitting inside a cache, and the CCTV wall is free for the taking. That was a beautiful angle. That was through the garage window, through the garage panel that was opened up outside on the south west corner. Beautiful job there on the side of the capital of Necrox. Canadian now can force his way up the catwalk and he oh! takes out Karzeka! <laughs> An easy melee right to the face of the dock of Empire and Evil Geniuses have a man count lead. A good situation. Oh, what are you doing, Joystick? Young, a free kill onto the Jaeger and Team Empire are starting to feel the pain. This is the same circumstances that EG found themselves in, and now Canadian will just continue to march on forward. He knows that they can't really do all that oh. much. Oh, he'll tap one, but the Bandit's gonna get trapped inside of the site. Canadian looking for one kill, but Scyther will gun down two of his teammates, and that Diffuser will be dropped as well. This could go very bad for Empire, who are bailing themselves out of a bad situation with Geo down below. This could be the end of EG's miracle return to form. Just a second of a miscalculation there from EG is all that matters, and Scyther is waiting for the body of NVK to pop up at the top of Red Stairs. Dan will come up now as well, but Geo could possibly catch the Maestro off guard. The Maestro looks the wrong way. We'll be able to win oh. the fight. No, Geo does. This will prompt Dan to have to do double duty, and NVK will watch as Geo goes for the plant. The sound cue will give Dan the information. Oh, he takes one down, oh. and a new Empire will rise as you crown a new champion here in Milan. An addition of Dan to this team proves to be what's needed. 
and this miracle comeback from evil geniuses will be all but a dream. Empire are your season nine champions. An absolutely amazing comeback on Oregon, followed by a stump fest on Clubhouse and a lockout when EG seemed to have it made. Team Empire proved themselves the better team in the long run, at least for now. What a wonderful match. An absolute heartbreaker. I mean, you got that feeling, Michael, at least I did, that we were looking at an opportunity to go to overtime. It sure did feel like we were back in the Six Invitational in 2018. Oh, yeah. With EG storming back after finding themselves down by such a number and a team that tried their damnedest and gave us such a thrilling performance at the Six Invitational in 2019. The longest competitive match in Pro League and competitive Rainbow Six history. That thriller on Coastline ends up being your champions here in Milan, but you don't want to hear from us. You want to hear from them. Congratulations, Team Empire. Finally, we get there after it nearly goes one way and another and almost back again. But here in Milan, the new Pro League champions are Team Empire. Wow. On behalf of everybody, wow. Karzeka. Let me take you quickly back. Three months ago, we were at the World Championship Final, the Six Invitational in Montreal, and there, you gave us the longest map of competitive siege we'd ever had at a finals. Took it to G2, but after you lost that game, crumbled and left that as the runners-up. Here, it so nearly went the same. You were seconds of losing this to EG, but you will lift that. Give us a feeling of how emotionally you've changed during that map as you nearly lost it and came out to be the winners. I mean, I don't know what to say right now. I'm right, right now I'm speechless. Like, we were down like 3-6 and there was like three rounds when, when uh, Evil Geniuses were on match point. And all of three rounds we were in clutch situation, like 1v1, 2v2. Like, we, we sat there so nervous and every time my teammates clutched this round, so I don't know what to say. That after we went to overtime on Oregon, we were sure that it's our map and we were gonna win that. And after we won Oregon, we just we just knew that we won't let that come back. Like very quickly, what do you want to say to the people here who are watching and here in Milan who have been cheering you on all the way to the end? I mean. This energy that we feel from you guys, from the, all the viewers, from our families, from online viewers who, who are watching that from Twitch. We, we all love you. Thanks for the support a lot. It gives us strength. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, the new Pro League champions of season nine. It's yours. Team Empire! Joystick! Kazaka! Shockwave, Scyther and Dan, they are Team Empire, and they are the Pro League Champions of Season 9! Champions of Season 9 will go to the desk.
And look at that incredible match! And give our commiserations to EG, but the win to the Russians!